Hey everybody, how's it going? It's me, Omni. I'm all by myself for now, but I think Daniel's going to be joining us later, so that's going to be cool. But hey, welcome to this stream where we're going to be creating a 3D model of Reggie based on the Muppet that they made for E3 something or other. I don't even remember what year it was, but yeah, I'm very excited to, to make this a, a 3D model because I really love this particular idea. Oh no, I can I can hear myself. Go away. Okay, sorry about that. Yes. So how's it going, everyone? I see that we have around 40, 48 people, maybe more now. Uh, I see uh, a bunch of people from the Discord server. So how's it going, everybody? Let's just go ahead and jump right into the process. So starting out with a cube, as usual. Uh, let's see, let's subdivide this a couple times, smooth it out. <laughs> this is pretty much how every stream starts, is me saying subdivide a cube. Maxi Gamer says, how are you? I'm doing all right. All right. So we're gonna start with a very smooth cube. I should probably smooth it more than that. That's good enough. So, so what's everybody up to these days? There's been quite a bit of time between this stream and the last one that we did. Um, I'm also very behind on stream highlights. Uh, we have them almost done, so we're going to be releasing those through the backlog. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to release those whenever I have a week where I'm not able to stream. Uh, I'll try to get one of those out. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into this right here. What do I want to do? What do I just... I'm going to be s s sculpting this for the most part. He's got a very, very pointed chin, so I've got to emphasize that. I feel like I want to extrude this just so I can get some more to play with. Uh, I don't know why I'm selecting ver vertex at a time. Uh, and then... Uh, let's see. I'm just smooth this way. Whoa. Chill. <laughs> I had a feeling there would be a lot of Mother 3 talk <laughs> once this thing started. Uh, let's see. I think that's probably enough just for the sculpt. I'm going to be doing most of the work in sculpt, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and subdivide this a few times. Sub two. All right. Let's do three and then apply it. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into sculpting. I might regret this, but I don't think so. You guys enjoying the new stage builder, by the way? I see a, a lot of people making really cool stuff. Game Explain showed a, a Bob on Battlefield. That was really cool. Mystical Miner, I see that you're doing some stuff. Any, any interesting uh, ideas that you've done so far? see is do the eyebrow ridge. Start with the planes basically. And then those prominent cheeks. Maybe the nose. I might do the nose as a separate thing, maybe. Let's give it a shot first. I should probably put Dent Topo on too. Ah, uh, Sega Nintendo says doesn't have a switch. That's a pity. I haven't done anything with the stage builder myself. Uh, I've been a little too busy working on some stuff for the channel, but uh, I'd like to. I want to make like a a Discord logo stage, which would totally not be like viable as a stage. But I feel like the yellow portions could be. I like the platforms, and then the rest could be in the background. Poco, how's it going? Yeah, I was actually watching the um, the VOD of the Game Grumps uh, playthrough of Skyward Sword earlier. So it's just a, a coincidence that this particular video playlist or, or 
compilation has uh, this song in it. So I'm feeling like this model is something that I would love to share with people so that they can do whatever they want with it. Uh, I don't know exactly what people would do. I'm imagining that people would be interested in, in making a mod of some kind. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to split this just so I can have the reference on one part while I can see on the other part. There we go. That's better. Now I can work. <laughs> All right. Ooh, Vidge is in here too. Is it Vidge or Vidge? I don't remember. I think I asked that last time you were in here. <laughs> I'm thinking the eyes are gonna be a ball, so I might as well stick a ball in here soon. He's got this kind of funny, like, very protruding bottom lip that I, I'm excited to try to capture. Hey Mellow Mars, how's it going? Don't worry about typing. Uh, I imagine that our streams are things that uh, people put in the background very often as opposed to actively watching since it's, it's kind of a slow process. But I don't know, maybe people do just like to stare at the screen. Oops, that's not the right tool. Where's my crease tool? Yerkdiff asks, Omni, just curious, why do you use Blender instead of Maya? Because it's free. And I learned it. <laughs> because it is free. I'm so glad I have this really prominent profile that I can look at. It's very helpful. All right, let's see what I need to do. I need to build up the nose a little bit. It's not uh, not bulbous enough. Yeah, there we go. I honestly don't know enough about Maya to make any comparisons. I imagine that each is better at their own things. Maybe Maya is better at more than Blender is, but Blender is continuing to improve a lot over time to the point that productions are starting to use it. Even some of the models that were made in, uh, made for the Smash trailers in Smash Wii U were made in Blender, according to uh, a video by the Canapa Effect. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> Tim's content says, you're doing the world a favor. I hope so. I was surprised that no one had done something like this already. Maybe someone has and it's just not easy to find. And if that's the case, well, hopefully this is a little bit easier to to get your hands on once it's done. Let's go ahead and make a, an eyeball real quick. Uh, let's see, UV sphere, let's just go with 16 and 8. And then subdivide it, just so I have a little bit more to play with, uh, a little bit more control if I want to do anything with it later. Subdivide. What just happened? Subdivision surface. Did I make two? Sure, I did. All right. Um, subdivision surface. What is with all of these? Okay, that's better. Let's go, uh, go ahead and add a mirror. Shrink. far apart are these. I'll we'll go with that for now. I know I have to pull the cheeks out. He's got this sort of like diamond shape. 
Nathan Lore, is it just me or is the Reggie puppet a bit creepy? You know, it is weird. It doesn't look that much like Reggie. I, I wouldn't say it's uh, the best caricature, but I do enjoy the design enough that I want to make it into a model. And it does kind of evoke like the style of Nintendo a bit. Obviously it's very Muppety, but I feel like if Reggie were to be in like a Mario game, he could have a model that's kind of like this. It's sort of in line with like Waluigi and Wario's head shapes, head uh, like those kinds of features. Uh, let's go back to sculpt mode. All right, I'm gonna scrape away some of the uh, top here. I might actually just do this so that I can have this visible while I do my own stuff down here. <laughs> Man, this is really subdivided, my workspace. This one's been helpful to have. <laughs> this one where he's doing the push-ups. He's doing a, a 64 push-ups. <laughs> All right, that's better. Simon asks, Simon 101, Simon, did you consider doing a model of Reggie more inspired by his uh, in real life appearance? and your own interpretation, interpretation, or was that too complex? Um, I'd definitely be interested in doing my own kind of character. I have my own sort of style when it comes to drawing people, like stylized versions of people, but I felt like this this particular opportunity was too good to pass up. I really like this, this puppet. Um, it was inspired specifically by the poster that Jeff Keighley had commissioned as a retirement gift for uh, for Reggie. I don't know if you guys saw that. You can find it on uh, Jeff Keighley's Twitter. I don't remember who the artist was that drew the poster. I wish I knew. Let me go ahead and actually look it up. Oh, Jeff Keighley. Reggie poster. Because I really want to give this artist credit for this. The poster was drawn. Come on, Twitter, load properly. <laughs> By Sam Spratt at Sam... S-P-R-A-T-T. -T. Well done, Sam Spratt. I could actually probably show you guys the, uh, the poster. Let me just pull it out here. Uh, let me just... Uh... This was the poster that was made for it. And I really like that the puppet is very prominently shown here. I love how short the forearms are compared to the upper arms. It's really silly. I probably won't do that with this model, but... I do enjoy that kind of quirk, but I love this poster. So again, Sam Spratt is the artist who made this. Anyway, enough of that. All right, let's get back to sculpting. Uh, what was I doing? I was trying to get this shape right. What are you guys saying in the chat? Yeah, it's a fun poster. I like it a lot. I can't, I'm trying to think if it's if, like if it's based on a specific poster from maybe the 80s or something like that, or if it's just that general feel. Um, if any of you recognize it as a specific parody, let me know. Phil, the uh, the guy that I work with on creating games, uh, was thinking that it was based on a, a real poster or a, a, a an original poster, but I don't know if it is. And I wasn't able to think of anything specific. Let's see. I think I can, I need to rotate this so I have a better idea of the angles that are at play. Let me rotate this reference. Uh, rotate. Back to 
sculpt. Not vertex paint. Also, I need to get rid of the UV maps on here so I can keep Dintopo on. There we go. Poco says, out of curiosity, what's been hold what's been the holdup for streams? I I've just been busy. Uh, finally got the, the office ceiling painted at my house, so that's nice. Been working on renovations and things like that. Very excited to start using that office properly once it's completely done. It's gonna be the first room that's done. Yeah, I'm not um, proficient enough. Uh, Carla Henry says, saw the thumbnail and thought it would be a photorealistic model of Reggie, but I click on it and see you're doing this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not proficient enough of a sculptor to make a properly realistic looking Reggie, at least not in a stream. It wouldn't get very far. That's the kind of thing where I would sit down and do it very, like take my time with it. I really need to give this guy eyelids. It's starting to creep me out. <laughs> That's probably too small. Maybe not. from I don't want to look <laughs> let me know if you know if you recognize it I recognize the sound but I don't remember what it is do the eyes need to be farther back is that what's going on I don't think so Coach, hey dude, just got here. Reggie's looking great. Thank you. I wouldn't say it looks great yet, but uh, it'll get there. This cheek needs to go a little higher. And also the chin. We need more power. Reggie's power comes from his chin, don't you know? Kind of like my hair. My power comes from my hair. Even though my hair's actually not not been up for months, I've been growing it too long. All right, I need to figure out where the hair is gonna go. I think that's gonna help. really rough hair looking kind of deal just to, to help visualize this is probably something that I would want uh, to bring into substance painter to give it like a really nice texture but that'll probably be off stream a lot of these I, I've come to notice that I've started a lot of projects on streams that I haven't finished and I feel a little bit about that, but uh, they will be finished. And then we'll make videos about the process, which will include any anything that we put in a stream as time-lapse, probably. All right, now I do some, some severe tweaks. I just tried to rotate a photo, what am I doing? Do I have a more head-on shot? I don't think I do. That's okay. Let's 
bring this in. I guess I could look at the poster, couldn't I? Let me zoom in on that poster. Which one's larger? This one? Okay. Open image, a new tab. Yeah, we go. All right. And bring this in. Need to flatten the top a bit. Uh, where's my crease brush? I'm gonna create a more more defined demarcation for the hair. See, Justin, is substance painter worth it for somebody who just does personal projects? I really like the results you get with it, but I can't justify spending the money. Uh, it is very expensive. It's definitely industry-grade stuff, so it might not be worth it. It really just depends on how much money you're willing to spend on your hobbies. I mean, there's people who spend thousands of dollars on their hobbies, so it's up to your, your discretion, I suppose. Maxi, you just made your day. I'm glad uh, people are into it. I wasn't sure. It's not quite like super specific to a game, like a real game. So this is the first like non-game content that we've tackled. But I think it's uh, it's relevant enough. The ears really need to be need to exist, don't they? Just so I can help it out a bit. Let's add uh, another cube. modifier to it. Let's do it down here. Mirror. Shrink on the Y specifically. Hmm? Nope. Yeah, it's gaming adjacent, says Dark Bolt. That's, uh, that's an accurate description of, of this work. Oh, Nathaniel's in here. Oh, hold on. I think you're muted at the moment, so let me activate you on, on to the people. Say hi, Nathaniel. Hey, hey guys. How's it going? It's uh, it's been a while since someone's been on stream with me, so this is nice to have. How's uh, how's everything yeah, I going with I might you? Might as well just pop in for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're gonna be around for an hour or so, maybe less. I don't know. Um, probably about 30 minutes or so. We'll, All right. we'll have to cool. see how things go. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, let's see. So, uh, you, you seen any of the progress so far on stream? Yeah, I, ju I just popped in right now. Gotcha. So, you're, you're basing it off the um, E3? Yeah. The, the, the direct thing? Uh-huh. I want this to be, like, a standard model in the community. <laughs> So I hope it gets some traction. Uh, <laughs> that would make my day. Any specific reason why you chose this instead of like a, like any other style, or? Uh, just because it's like I've got a very specific thing that I can replicate. So I feel like this this should exist, even if it's uh, not necessarily the most accurate to what Reggie looks like. I feel like it should it should <laughs> it be available. It makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, right. See. Right now, it looks like one of the uh, haunted mansion. <laughs> oh, haunted mansion <laughs> especially things. with the the eyes. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I feel like it's gonna be staring at me no matter which way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Pull this down. 
we need to uh we need to do more music kind of stuff on on the channel I, i'm about to release a, a video that talks about how will and i created the trailer music i've been editing that together uh, i was hoping to get it out a long time ago but i've been neglecting it uh, but I really want to like talk about music process more on the channel. I don't know if you'd be you'd be down for that kind of thing. Yeah, I'd totally be down for it. Uh, it's just a matter of when you guys actually need me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Um, Dark Volt says 3D print uh, as a bust. That would be fun. I'd love to have a 3D printed <laughs> Reggie on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Low key, I also kind of want Reggie to see this when it's done. <laughs> so let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, He's apparently been more active on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, he I'm has. Like people like uh, Zelda Universe and uh -huh. a few other people that I've, I'm associated with. Not even necessarily the like, huge, huge uh, people in the community, but just people who have like modest followings are even getting yeah, yeah. followed. So I feel like we have a chance. We might be able to, to get noticed. <laughs> Noticed by Reggie Simpa. Yeah, exactly. We have senpais too. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who the the biggest person is, or people, or group that that's aware of our existence. I was uh, I was on Rogers Base's stream where J C Rodrigo, one of the Treehouse guys, was at his apartment, and apparently J C knows who I am, which surprised me. Or at least he he saw my name and and exclaimed in a way that implied that he knows who I am. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that you kind of popped up on the radar after the whole <laughs> leaks and stuff that happened. It's so hard to tell though, like if people because that was like a long time ago, and and obviously I've drifted oh, yeah. out of the well, spotlight well, quite still, a bit. I'm sure yeah. you at least popped up on the radar because I'm sure employees were like wondering wait like, what <laughs> there actually was a leak and they weren't as sure of it or right. something like that yeah or... might be might be because that was really the first time that like that kind of changed honestly that kind of changed the way the internet viewed leaks period because until then it was kind leaks were a little bit more trusted <laughs> until you came along uh, yeah that might be the case uh, it does. It definitely seems like it's more of a thing to do to make a fake leak than it used to be. Yeah, it definitely is now. But uh, and I don't know if I'm necessarily responsible for that, but I definitely contributed, probably, definitely, probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I need to give this guy pupils so that he doesn't freak me out so much. He's scaring me. Uh, rotate X ninety, and then I'm just gonna extrude this shape inside the eye um, and I should have probably shrinked it first so whoops inset extrude Oh, that's even creepier. Oh, no. <laughs> that's very creepy. It looks like he's about to shoot laser beams <laughs> out, of, out of his eyes. Oh, no. Uh, I, need to, I need to sculpt around it. That's what I need to do. Whoops. Sculpt mode. I mean, his eyes in the in the original puppet are kind of dead looking anyway so it's going to be tricky to get this to look good but i'm uh, i'm up for the challenge let's see does that look any better uh, slightly i guess I don't know how far behind you are, but I'm assuming the delay is like 30 seconds um, or something. You just, you just added some depth to the oh, okay. eye. Yeah, that's going to be a little while in. Or smoothing it out now. Oh, he also needs eyebrows. That's what's making it look so doofy. He's got those pointy, pointy eyebrows. Why did I go into the camera? That's better. Oh, this is a train wreck. All right. 
Let me just put some focus on this part of the process for a little while. I need some help. This is a fun song. This playlist, by the way, is just a bunch of relaxing Nintendo music. I thought it would be fun to have a, <laughs> something a little more serene for the subject matter. Yeah, it makes him a little bit less intimidating to look at. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, sculpting. So much of this process ends up looking really creepy until it gets to the right place. Mm, I haven't sure. I haven't done enough human sculpting to have a better like a more defined workflow. It's tricky. So until Smashify and Curiomatic happened, you didn't really do too much sculpt three D sculpting at all, did you? Nope. I hadn't even started doing like learning it until twenty sixteen, a year after we started. What was the first which was the first video that you actually started learning with? Uh, so the Masked Man one was the one I, the first one that I, I had any 3D contribution. I only worked on the helmet. Um, mm -hmm. And then from there I started, I think Kumatora was the first one that I really like took the lead on 3D. And uh, just continued from there, I guess. And now I, I tend to be the lead on most 3D projects now, which is fun. Oh, somebody asked earlier, I can't remember who it was, but uh, what uh, what software do we use for music production? You can probably answer that on your end, at least for I, your, your stuff. Yeah, I personally I personally use uh, Cubase 6. Um, actually, no, it's I, I finally had to upgrade because it was breaking finally. What were I you use using Cubase for? Cubase 8 now. Oh, okay. Um, it's, it's very expensive to, to get it. Uh, it's definitely worth the price once you eventually get it, but it, it'll take a bunch of saving up, but the tools that it has in it is definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, but it's better for like orchestral or like scoring music and stuff like that. As far as like electronic music and uh, like general remixes and <laughs> dubstep and stuff, I'd say probably FL Studio or something is probably better and easier to use. Mm -hmm. It's better for remixes and stuff and chopping up samples and yada yada. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I started off with. And, and for my stuff, which is much, much less uh, refined, is uh, I use Logic Pro 10, which is Apple's offering for a digital audio workstation. It's actually a lot more popular among professionals than I thought it might be, but I guess that makes sense if Apple mm -hmm. only makes it. Yeah, Ableton yeah. being the really big one that people use. Yeah, it's usually between those three, Ableton, mm -hmm. uh, that, and Cubase. Yeah, FL Studio is a little, little, little behind those. I know Will used to use yeah. uh, Cubase, but now he switched to Reaper, I believe, which I don't know anything about, <laughs> so. None of it's cheap. No. <laughs> audio is, oh my god, audio is so expensive, period. Mm -hmm. Unless you're sailing the seven seas, you're going to be paying a lot for, <laughs> for music right. programs. Yeah. These eyes are too small, that's the problem. That's a problem, at least. I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see. What are my tools? I guess I can just push it around this way. <laughs> this looks so bad right now. I'm embarrassed right now. This face is so weird. It's like squished in, like he got punched in the face. Uh. What did I just do? Yeah, you, picked a, you picked an interesting thing to model from. <laughs> yeah. I will not end this stream until it looks uh, more acceptable. This is uh, <laughs> this is rough right now. I mean, even the the puppet, like someone else said, it looks like closer to the the crimson chin. <laughs> Let me 
Let's see. Hmm. I will not rest until this model looks exactly like the Muppet. That's when it's done. And that might take a uh, waiting till reads apology, but I think it'll happen eventually. Probably off stream. But it's Friday, I just wanted to stream today. Are you gonna see uh, End Game on and on on oh, premiere day? Are you thinking? Are you interested uh, in seeing? I don't it? know. I mean, I I would, but I have no one to really to watch it with. So, um, otherwise, I'll probably just stay offline and watch it the day after. Gotcha. I've, I'm contemplating. Ideally, I would it. love to, but I mean, we should. We haven't hung out in like a long time, so we should. Yeah. If no one else is gonna go, we and live, if I you're mean, interested. Yeah, we live like still like maybe ten minutes away. I think. <laughs> right. Where do you, well, don't, don't don't say it. Never mind. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> right. Say it. Not too specifically, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we, I, I literally live downtown Greenville now. Mm -hmm. So. How that's how's that working out now? I know you. Uh, uh, I just moved about a week ago, okay. so it's very very empty in here. But my studio looks pretty nice. Nice. I still need to put a lot of soundproofing foam and stuff everywhere but mm -hmm. yeah it looks it's shaping up i think i'm gonna flatten this eyeball a little bit it's starting to look a little bit better yeah slowly but surely i think his face just looks a little bit like vertically long like not as stretched down as the the puppet when I when I look at it, yeah, it's here. Let me see if I can get him. Yeah, Reg, Reggie's a thick boy, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, set parent to object and then scale along the X. That does a lot, actually. Oh, chill out. And then sculpt. Let's start pushing stuff around. Oh, that already looks a lot better. <laughs> His ears are also very uh, yeah. prominent. I think if I uh, actually add a material to this, I'm actually scared to because then the hair is going to be the same color. So I think I'm going to skip that. Let me uh, let me set it to random. See if that doesn't. Nope, that doesn't help. That just looks like an alien. That just looks like a Cree. <laughs> Are you all the way up to date on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Did you watch all, all of the no, seasons? No, I've, I've fallen back. Really? I've fallen back. The last thing that happened was, uh, spoiler alert, is uh, um, they they were in space and they were fighting. Um, they were like, the weird Cree people were like making people fight each other. And okay, yeah. Um, I think what's her face just escaped from being like a slave or something. Okay. I don't remember. You're not too far long. back then. I mean, you're in the the right season at least. There's not. Yeah. A, there hasn't been anything. I think since I'm like then. two seasons behind, maybe. I don't know. The last thing that happened. Today. The last thing that I remember happened is Fitz finally caught up with everyone else. Okay. That's the last thing I remember. Have they done a season since then? I thought they hadn't. I have no, no idea. <laughs> I think I think you're on the most current season, but I might be wrong. I, I could have uh, missed an entire season and not known it. Some people are mentioning that I should move the eyes down a bit. Let's see if that works. If, the, if that checks out. Yeah, they should definitely go down. Or the nose should go up. What's easier to do? The nose, probably. Let's try it. Uh, 
I guess I'm meeting in the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. <laughs> Mouth has to move up too. I think that's better. Let me, uh... This chin feels really... <laughs> really yeah. <cool. laughs> Definitely. Let's see, where's my scrape tool? There I go again, trying to rotate a flat image. See how confident I am in my abilities. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, think that's an improvement. I get back to clay strips and start to build some of this back up. Toxiquid with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you here. You've been uh, up to a lot. I noticed that you haven't been super active on the Discord server, but I can I can uh, understand that with uh, school and all that. Let's see. What song is this? I don't recognize this. I'm not gonna look though. I don't need any more distractions. Uh, let's see. I think that's better. Oh so, yeah, have you tried out Joker yet and Smash yet? I have actually. I, I tried him out yesterday for the first time. I didn't actually try what him uh, the first day, but I think I think uh, Joker's pretty weak without Arsene or whatever his name is. I never played Persona, so I'm not super familiar, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but if you're able to manage switching, I mean, it's, it happens by itself, so I guess you don't really have to manage it too much. But if you're able to manage building up your your what's it, rebellion gauge or whatever it's called, rebellion, yeah, um, then it's he seems pretty balanced. I thought uh, initially when they revealed his move set, I thought he might be overpowered based on like the whole power up kind of dynamic. But it, it's pretty fair. He's he's not all that viable unless you're able to get consistent uh, persona. His rebellion up. thing, Arsen or whatever his name is, is uh, seems to stay out for a pretty decent amount of time yeah. too. So so I, I think it, he's fun. I think um, he's fairly balanced. I, uh, <laughs> the last time I played before this was when Piranha Plant came out, so I haven't really been playing that much Smash, unfortunately. <laughs> I, uh, I still haven't played it in... Oh my god. Uh... About two months before Piranha Plant came out. Oh, really? Yeah, it's been a hot minute. Have, do you have a Switch now? I, I know you didn't buy one right away. Um, 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 I technically have one, but I'm kind of giving it to someone else, and they're gradually paying it off. Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. Just because Smash was the only reason why I, I got it, and Zelda was kind of a disappointment <laughs> to mm -hmm. me. Um, I liked Mario, but... Everything else has, nothing else has really stood out for me yet, so gotcha. I have no real reason to have it. That's fair. Plus, I've been a, a dweeb and playing <laughs> Overwatch constantly. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, you know, you're definitely into that more so than than anything. Uh, yeah, in the that Nintendo and D &D, these days. that's my life. <laughs> How long have you been doing the D and D stuff now? I know that you stream it um, pretty pretty frequently. About uh, probably only two years actually. But like it's I've yeah it's kind of caught up now and I've been kind of 
I know I know everything about everything now. <laughs> I even tried uh, dungeon mastering for the first time. Oh yeah, a few weeks ago. Nice. Uh, and I've got it with all Critical Role and all that stuff, both campaigns, and now I'm uh, doing some other things. Harmon Quest, I've got it with that, and um, um, Adventure Zone is something I'm just now starting, so. Okay. I haven't uh, ever done anything in that sort of realm, although I have a lot of friends who do, and I just never mm -hmm. got roped into it. it. Seems like it'd be fun being very creative on the, on the fly a lot of improvisation that kind of stuff is uh, yeah. appealing yeah it's a lot of fun uh, Harmon Quest is what got me into it because it's animated and it's very short episodes mm -hmm. uh, only 20 minute episodes and obviously Dan Harmon and one person from Whose Line Is It Anyway is in it but I don't remember oh, who interesting do you remember um, his first name and it's no <laughs> can look it up really fast uh but it's animated and it has the same style as dave the barbarian if you ever watched that as oh a yeah kid. yeah quest stars uh jeff b davis okay not something i rec somebody i recognize but interesting interesting nonetheless <laughs> Popo Sfu <laughs> is asking, will you make this public? Yes, I will make this public. BD is asking, what layout of Blender is this? This is Blender 2.8, and I'm just using a custom layout that I adjust on the fly. It's not really any predefined layout or anything like that. All right, let's see. I need to adjust the chin a lot. Competent at the moment. I feel like I should uh, have this farther along than I do. Well, you picked a very unusual muse. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. But hey, at least it's amusing. Oh, coming in here uh, with the dad humor. <laughs> God, you should have fired me years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm the only dad allowed. I'm the one with the, with the dad jokes. If anyone is, else tries to usurp my throne, which among the team, I'm probably not even <laughs> the punniest one, but... <laughs> no, I'm definitely the one that has the most puns. <laughs> it's, it's only gotten worse since uh, Curiomatic took its break, too, so... Right. Poco is asking, what were your first impressions of Reggie? You know, I don't even remember. Like, I don't think I ever, I, I don't think I was uh, super into the scene, like watching E3 when Reggie first came on. So he was already just like a presence when, by the time I was really following Nintendo stuff closely. Um, but I mean, I've always liked Reggie. He's got this like really awkward charisma about him. <laughs> That's yeah. the best way I can describe it. He's got like yeah. that pose that he goes into every time he's done with like a phrase. He puts his his hands together and then he like separates them and then he goes back. He, he feels Very robotic. Like, he feels like the the cool like the quote unquote cool dad that keeps up with technology. <laughs> right. Like the cool like the cool dad of Nintendo or something. Yeah, the cool dad that's not super like slick or anything, but he, you appreciate him for yeah. his, his interests. Hello, kids. <laughs> I'm 
Let's see. I could I could sit here for hours just trying to tweak this face. I've got to be careful. Something is proportionally, I feel like this this face needs to just inflate completely. I wonder what I can do about that. I could use a lattice. Let's try that. Uh, insert lattice. Scale it up. Uh, let's see, resolution two, three, four. Let's just go with seven, why not? And then add a modifier, lattice, same to you. What are you doing? Why do you exist? All right, lattice and the eyes, same deal. Lattice, and then edit the lattice. What's the best way to go about this? Scale. Be careful. Man, lattice is just so handy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you laughing at the puppet head model to a purple Pikmin body? <laughs> 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 That's right. He said something about like, is that his? being his favorite Pikmin, and that's the Pikmin that he, he most uh, relates to or something like that. <laughs> I need to check the profile. Something feels off. This whole thing needs to s move down. That's what he said, Waluigi Fanatic said, I feel just like a purple Pikmin. Oh, Reggie. <laughs> You're one liners. He's so weird, by the way. Yeah. I wonder how much of that was him, like, putting his own creative, like, take yeah, on things. Yeah, I don't know. And how much was just scripted. Yeah, because, like, he's not, like, a great actor, obviously. That's not his job. <laughs> But he's so willing to do this goofy stuff. Yeah. So, I wonder. I wonder when that started. I guess Nintendo Directs weren't a thing yet when he started out. And then once they once they started using that format, he just slotted right into it. Okay, this is finally starting to shape a bit. Shape up a bit. What are your thoughts on Joker and Smash? Asks Jacob Von Pringleton. <laughs> nice name. Also, uh, well, actually, I'll get to that later. Uh, my thoughts on Joker and Smash, I, I enjoy that he's there, and I think he's got a fun playstyle, 
and he's not my favorite character or anything, but uh, I think they implemented him very well. I love all the music, though. I love oh, the, the Persona, Persona music. music. Yeah, it's great. Persona mm -hmm. just got a, a great style overall. It, it does. I was I've only like played three and four, but I just started listening to the soundtracks of the uh, first and second games too, and mm -hmm. they're pretty pretty good for old games. I haven't heard anything from the first few actually. Uh, I don't think I heard any anything from one through three. If, if if you like Jet Set Radio's music, you'll like this. It's not okay. like the same style, but it has the same kind of funky feel to mm -hmm. it, and it's really it's really fun. Well, I love me some Jet Set Radio. Uh, Naganuma mm -hmm. is one of my inspirations <laughs> when it comes yeah, to music. Jet Set and uh, Sonic Rush. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Actually, who's the composer for Persona? Let me check. I don't actually know. I mean, who doesn't love Sonic Rush music? If you don't love Sonic Rush music in the chat, get out. <laughs> oh, Get Mads asks, would you ever do Smashified-esque artwork only in Photoshop like you did with the original Rayman ever again? Or is it just unnecessary since you've learned 3D? Um, I would say we get better results when it's actually 3D, so it's probably not something we'll be doing more of. But I understand that people enjoy the process, so... We might try to apply that to other things that are not related to Smashified. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see, I guess. He needs that cleft chin. There we go. Yeah, Sh Shoji Maguro is the the composer, but he's really only ever done uh, Persona things, really. Interesting. Well, most of it, most of it is. And Shin Megami Tensei, but they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Sculpting is starting to get really slow. I think it's because of the lattice. I think I'm gonna have to turn the resolution down, maybe. What is my resolution? Where are you? Whoa. What just happened? You know what? I'm just gonna apply this lattice. I don't think I need it anymore. On the other ones too. Apply. Apply. All right, there we go. Sculpt. Oh. All right, sculpt. <laughs> Thank you, I Carrick, <laughs> for your contribution. something. I don't know if I, I call this uh, appealing, but it's something. Uh, let's see, under the lip needs a bit more work. Whoa, there we go. I 
I, what is this song? I've asked that like three times and I refuse to look because I don't want to take my eyes off of the pro process. This is not... Oh, I'd have to look at the description. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's not worth it. Poplet needs some help. Hmm. By the way, is there a... I don't know if you're interested in letting people know publicly, but is there any kind of projects, like music-focused projects, that you'd be interested in doing for the channel? Anything that you've had in mind? Um, well, I have the... I'm already done three tracks for one mini album. I think I showed you one mm -hmm. yeah. song of uh, the Delta Tunes thing, mm -hmm. the, the mix of Undertale and uh, Delta Room. Um, that's the main thing that I've got in the works right now. But uh, aside from that, not a, not especially. Are you still I'd, working I'd be on? I'm up for ideas and stuff, though. Yeah. Are you still working on the uh, some of the reorchestrated kind of stuff that you were doing on your channel? Um, because I've been getting so much work with like actual indie games and stuff like that, I've kind of put it on hold. Yeah, for sure. Plus, there, it's uh, I don't know how much interest is actually in it anymore. Right. <laughs> so I've kind of given up on it. No problem. I mean. Uh, there's so many projects that that are unfinished on my slate. I know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything that we've streamed on the channel is not finished yet. <laughs> It'll probably be something that I come back to whenever I feel like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <But> <laughs> there's no real goes. need to. And yeah. most of the time, things that go on my channel are like songs that have been commissioned for like instrumentals or things like that for the most mm. part everything else has kind of been non-disclosure agreement stuff so right between that and uh any voice work has been kind of everything i've been doing <laughs> recently i haven't had much time to do free stuff on my channel yeah well it's great that you've been able to get a lot more stuff in, in the in the gaming space yeah it's uh, a little bit of a weird niche of, of gaming which i kind well, of yeah. hope to get out of eventually but visual novel music is not something that i expected to to stay in right. <laughs> but hey it pays well so oh animal crossing music is so good that's what's playing right now i don't know if you can hear it but uh animal crossing music is good in animal crossing but not in zelda <laughs> Which is why I don't like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a very different shift in direction for that franchise. I do not like it. I really do not like it. I could go on a thirty minute rant on that, <laughs> and I won't. <laughs> I still haven't finished Breath of the Wild. <laughs> there rests my case. <laughs> And it's it's only because I've been holding on to this notion that I I'll still be able to continue the let's play that I started on it, but I should give up on that. Like there's there's no reason that I should expect to be able to continue doing that let's play. But I think I've only put in like forty hours in that game, which is not a lot for that game. <laughs> I, I would have liked it m more, but I, I don't mind the, the new things that they added. I can even get past some of the music choices, quote unquote choices, but um, uh, I just don't like that they took a huge step away from the story. Right. Like, huge. 
Like, I'm very happy that they took like a completely different uh, shift in what the game can be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very healthy for a game, but the story is kind of why it, it's the cornerstone of Zelda, honestly. And the fact that it's just canon again. <laughs> right. Yeah. And not even Ganon with personality. <laughs> just a, a literal shadow of his former self. So. Skyward Sword. This is fun music. How do you feel about the Skyward Sword soundtrack? Um... <laughs> I like it. I do like it. The art style was kind of strange. Oh, sure. Yeah, the I art love, style is. I love is the music, though. I love the music. This is Fee's theme, I think. If I remember correctly. But I, I generally liked, liked it. It was kind of a weaker, no pun intended, weaker link in the series, but I feel like it they introduced a lot of interesting characters at least mm -hmm. and it was a it was a kind of breath of fresh air from the whole ganon only <laughs> type of right. thing yeah demise um, yeah demise and uh girahim girahim mm -hmm. was an actually like interesting yeah he's great villain. i love girahim i think they try to tie in things a little bit too much to ganon and i think they kind of made it a little bit less appealing yeah demise like, was it's sort like of they were a weak it, it felt like last minute like a last minute tie-in like oh oh crap we need a reason for this game to be at the beginning of this series. <laughs> right where it could have just been a standalone thing with just like with gary like demise didn't even have to show up i liked what what's demise's like first form like that uh, was actually fine by the itself. The imprisoned. Yeah, the imprisoned. Like, I didn't. I don't mind like non-humanoid final bosses and stuff like that in in Zelda. Like, it, uh, I don't know. Like Vati and how it transforms and Varen from the Oracle games and. Mm, yeah. A lot of the handheld Zeldas don't get a lot of love as far as the characters that get introduced. Oh, I mean, some of them, especially the Capcom the ones. The characters are so great. Yeah, Cap I, I really hope that Capcom uh, has another thing that they do with Zelda because they did such good jobs with the with the handheld games. Yeah, I agree. Vati, one of my favorite recurring villains. Um, not... Who's... You played the Oracle games, right? I did not, actually. Oh, not the Oracle games. There's this one, there's this one like, not anti-hero, but like, Oracle of Ages characters. Silly Google trying to, to change it into Ocarina instead of Oracle. <laughs> um, Ralph. Ralph was a really good cool Oh, designer. yeah. Yeah. I know him. I know a lot about... Well, I recognize a lot of, of characters from games that I've never played because I used to spend a lot of time on wikis and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I love uh, Varen and whoever the bad guy was for Oracle of Seasons I forget what his name was uh, was that the gold armor dude the iron knuckle looking guy yeah I can't remember his name I feel like a fake fan <laughs> I have the manga too I just don't remember his name um Onyx oh that's right General Onyx His final boss fight was pretty cool. Stuff like that. He turns into a dragon and it's a non typical fight. I never played Triforce Heroes though. That was one game I that I either. wanted to try, but it looked interesting, but 
I kind of wanted a single play, <laughs> single player right. thing. I think that's what. Yeah, you definitely uh, need friends to enjoy that to to the fullest yeah. potential. I didn't even buy it. I liked Four Swords though when I played that. I have Four Swords, but I haven't played it. I own it and never played it because I never had like a friend the, the who game, had a link the cable. The GameCube one or the one? Not for Four Swords Adventures. The, the the one for the GBA, the original Four Swords. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, you can play that one kind of by yourself, but. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just hit myself with a two liter of Dr. <laughs> no. Pepper in the mouth. Are you drinking straight from the two liter? <laughs> yes, because I have no roommates, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. see somebody's making some recommendations waluigi fanatic says you should make the eyes more rounded are you talking about like the corners or are you talking about the shape of the eyes like the forms oh yeah i also liked phantom hourglass as a oh yeah as a game. The, the ds games i feel like I get never, unnecessarily hate hated like th there's I, I some repetition there i never cared too much about spirit tracks I love the music, but I never cared about the about the plot, I guess. Right. Like Chancellor Cole or whatever his name was. <laughs> I didn't care anything about him. Yeah, I would say the best part about Spirit Tracks was Zelda herself as a character. I think that mm -hmm. was the most interesting version of Zelda because she actually contributes to the quest in a more substantial yeah, I guess Tetris does too. Damsel but in distress. Yeah. yeah. Tetra a little bit, but obviously not as much as, as Zelda in this Yeah, one. she's not as active in, in Wind Waker. And then she literally gets kidnapped in Phantom Hourglass by by Maladus. Maladus, is that his name? Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the whole Temple of the Ocean King deal was definitely frustratingly repetitious, but other than that, mm. I, I think they get yeah. uh, undue hatred. And uh, Chugga Conroy is actually playing Phantom Hourglass right now. I started watching his Let's Play, but I haven't kept up. He always does a good job, like, shedding the most positive light on whatever game he's playing. I enjoy his stuff. All right, I think it's starting to shape up as th as the thing that I'm trying to make, as weird as it is. <laughs> I imagine it'll be easier to make uh, some more fine-tuned adjustments when I actually retopologize this, but I think for now it's uh, starting to become more stable. Those lips, they're so weird. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, for someone that like me that has no idea what it is, what what is retopology? Retopology is so topology describes the the flow of the polygons on the model, um, mm -hmm. and so when with, with a sculpt you've got like millions or hundreds of thousands of polygons, so it's not optimal topology. And to make any changes to it, you have to use the sculpt tools. Um, so retopology is basically making uh, a more low poly mesh based on the sculpt that you made. Uh, at least in the case of sculpts. Um, but the general process of retopology is basically just making a new model with, with new topology. Um, so this will be like the, 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 the poly count on a retopologized mesh might be like a, f a thousand or a few thousand, maybe for a head, maybe even in the hundreds, um, as opposed to hundreds of thousands or millions. I started doing some retopology. Oh, the music's stopped. I need to find another playlist of relaxing music. Oh, chill out, chill out. What are you doing? Uh, let's see. This one's four years old and it has some Mario Galaxy stuff in it. I think I used to fall asleep to this playlist. 
Anyway, uh, I did a retopology stream for Rayman um, a little while ago, if you wanted to check that out, just to see the general process. But I, I vaguely know what it is now, because uh, I imported one model into uh, VRChat one time, so I oh, vaguely okay. know what that is. Yeah. I had the uh, the inkling to make a VR chat like place. I don't even know what they're called, like a place where you hang out. Because I know the Game Grumps made their office as one, and I thought, you know, it'd be fun to make like my house because I'm making a 3D model of my house already. <laughs> so I could just convert that into a VR I mean, chat could, room. Yeah. You, you uh, honestly could. Yeah. What am I trying to do right now? Um, let's see. What UV data do I have? Oh, vertex colors. Go away. That's why. Okay. Let's see. Are you familiar with Scruffy, Daniel? He's a YouTuber. No. He's not uh, what, too what he big, uh, but he's a musician and... Uh, programmer and artist. He's one of those unicorns that can do all the things. And he doesn't mm. have a huge following, but he made this really great video about how sound design was uh, handled in Pikmin. It, he made some, some videos about uh, how they model certain things in Pikmin 3. And uh, he's doing like a, an album of arrangements for a hypothetical uh, Mario game. And it's really cool, very orchestral. Oh, cool. Um, I, I kind of want to collab <laughs> with uh, with him on a project, <laughs> like take his idea and make like an actual level or something out of it. But that would be a lot of work. Yeah, that would be really cool. What are people saying in the chat? Talking about Zelda, actually. Waluigi Fanatic says, Scruffy's awesome, he's underrated. He definitely is underrated. He made like a whole short film in Blender. That's pretty cool. I'm getting more into uh, animation these days, which is nice. I, I'm doing two scenes for Kevin's uh, Rhythm Heaven Reanimated, which is oh, cool. really cool. I love the project. Yeah, I saw some behind the scenes stuff with that as well from his nice. side. That was really cool. I had the privilege of Lots doing of the keep, title keep screen track. for that, which is fun. Oh, that's awesome. I'll probably make some videos about like the the project file for that to let people see how it was uh, animated or something. Might be fun. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of people in, in the community, like the, the fan content community that I really uh, enjoy. Blob, Blob Van Dam is one of these guys who made uh, a recent remake of one of the levels from Donkey Kong Country 2, one of the Bramble levels, and uh, that his first one got like millions of views. Um, I don't know how many views this one's up to, but he's working on a Link to the Past remake in 3D, kind of kind of in the style of a Link Between Worlds, but more more true to the original Link to the Past, I think. Um, and I really want to <laughs> see if uh, I could like interview some of these people because I think it'd be cool to, to talk to these people and get a, a look into their process. Mm -hmm. Speaking of process, didn't, didn't you do a stream, like a music stream on the channel at one point? I think we did like one or something like that. I know we, we set you I, up. I think we did one time. Mm -hmm. I think that was once. Um, but 
there wasn't really I think it was for the um uh the Kingdom Hearts reorchestrated one of those songs that I did uh oh, okay. but I know that it wasn't really announced much so there weren't many people that came mm-hmm. I didn't know how if people were really going to be interested in it so I just didn't pursue it anymore because at that point, that. it was more a channel just for Smashify. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, so. It probably fit more into what we're doing now. Um, mm-hmm. I need to get more people set up with the stream layout because I'm the only one who's been able to stream so far. But music streams are tricky because music uh, process is a lot of like listening to the thing that you just put down over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how interesting it, it is. It's some, yeah, watch. it'd be something that would probably be better, like, after, after the, the fact. Like, not yeah. after the fact, but, like, once the skeleton of it has been kind of laid down and you're kind of just fixing things up, but the initial part is kind of... It's not, <laughs> it's not much to do. Right. So... It's, it's a lot easier if you're remixing something to stream it, but if you're composing something from scratch it's a little oh yeah for sure there's a lot more experimentation that Mm -hmm. i mean there's probably people out there who are who are have a little bit more direction when it than i do at least when it comes to making something up from scratch but yeah and i'm not that i i'm not at that point either so i kind of experiment as i go Mm -hmm. yeah so here I'd love to be able to do more original stuff, but I, I have to, you know, pick a thing to do, because otherwise I'm not going to get mm-hmm. anything finished. Um, yeah. Like I started trying to come up with like a soundtrack for my RT Omni channel, but I only ever did one track for that, <laughs> and so I just use that for everything that I do on that channel. Um. Yeah, music is uh, is an interesting beast. I've been watching a lot of, like, Adam Neely. I don't know if you're familiar with Adam Neely. Um, Mm. He's a trained musician who does a lot of videos about music theory. And I've been trying to, like, really double down on my music theory knowledge because I feel like it could help uh, a lot with, you know, being more purposeful about how I handle certain things. And so far, it's been a little helpful. Um being more thoughtful about how to construct a melody, stuff like that. Game uh, 8-Bit Music Theory is another one that I like a lot. He's been doing this thing called one uh, Music Theory Minute, I think it's called. And uh, he talks about like a lot of simple concepts, which is nice for me because I did not go to school for this. So it'd be nice yeah. to, to learn from people who were more articulate about it. The model store in the shape up a little bit now yeah something to look uh, like the, he has a decent hairline <laughs> <laughs> right the eyes freaking me out though i need to do something about it i think once it's not once it's not like a statuesque looking <laughs> you know, it may look better but whoa and Maybe. once he has eyebrows and stuff Uh, let's see, I need to move the shadow. It's going, starting to get in the way. There we go. Let's try that. There's some, I'm sorry, but there's something about his bottom lip that just kind of creeps me out. <laughs> <laughs> I like think the, there's the a lower left side. Yeah, especially. I see that now that you mention it. Let's see what I can do about that. Actually, you know what? I should, um, real quick, I should save. And to avoid people seeing my files, because they're secrets, I'm going to cover it up real quick. Save as. <laughs> I, I don't know why I've waited this long to save. This is danger. But I've been playing with fire. Uh, let's see. Look at all these projects that you guys aren't allowed to see. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Well, on that on that note, I think I'm actually going to hop out now. 
All right. So it was a lot of fun, though. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. It's been nice having someone to uh, to talk to during these instead of to myself. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to hop into more if uh, if I'm around for yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, see you later. See ya. All right. Let's see how much more I'm able to do. I think I'm only going to be on for like another half hour, maybe. Um, what am I doing? I'm not even sculpting on the right object, am I? I am. The heck? Why aren't you sculpting? Is my... What is happening? I'm scared. Why is this not doing anything? Oh, it is. Okay. Phew. I guess my strength needs to be up, I guess. I guess, I guess. Yeah, let me carve off a little bit of that lip. And then get a little bit more in the front. I guess. I have a feeling I might be cutting back on how much start process, like beginnings of processes I do on stream. I might start things off stream and then pick them up. I feel like it might be a little bit more interesting to watch because a lot of the beginning of these processes is like me fuddling around, not really knowing what to do. <laughs> and I feel bad when that happens because I feel like I, I should be able to offer more insight in the process than that than me just like flying by the seat of my pants Michael Todd's asking if this is going to be in Smash what are his alt costumes? That's a good question uh, the Reginator for sure would be one I bet I mean that's kind of up to the people who, who actually put it in the game um, although I imagine I'd have to make a some kind of change to make the originator. Th well, I guess it's really just the glasses, isn't it? Waluigi Fanatic, do your homework. What are you doing? Just put this in the background. You don't have to watch. It's slow progress anyway. <laughs> I wish I knew what uh, focal length they were using for the camera on this because it's a little bit difficult to know if I'm getting these shapes right. Hmm. Let me see if I can pull on this a little bit. Let me compare it to the profile again. Whoa, his nose is very flat. What did I do? Muppet Falco, yeah, that should be an alt costume. He should be an Echo Fighter, actually, of Reggie. Something over here is, is is off. Uh 
that's a little bit better. I'm going to make a shrink-wrapped eyebrow real quick. Let's see how this goes. Where is my cursor? Cube one. Yeah. Why should I should rename this Reggie Head and then rename this Eyebrow. Always name your layers slash objects. Always helpful. Um Did I have doubles on here? Remove doubles. Yes, I did, okay. And then let's see, shrink wrap you to Reggie Head. Offset. Oops. Uh, actually, I should probably subdivide it first. Maybe. Random Chiz says, do you, what, what do you think of the new stage builder? Have you made anything? I haven't actually done anything with it. I was thinking of uh, making a Curiomatic logo stage just for fun. Um, but I find myself having trouble justifying spending that much time in something like stage builder because I can make better things in Blender than I can at stage builder. So like, I feel like I should focus on like a mod stage or something like that. Um, so I don't know if I'll do much. I'll probably spend some time playing other people's creations, but making them is less appealing now that I can do things in Blender and stuff like that. Maybe that's snooty. I don't know. Let's add a mirror modifier to the eyebrow. And then let's do a solidify with some thickness. Uh, before the shrink wrap? No, after the shrink wrap. Yeah. And then shade smooth. There we go, we've got a working eyebrow. How much off did I just give that? Good gracious. Uh, yeah, okay, that's better, I think. Toxic Quaid, going back to why I'm not in the Discord as much uh, as I was before is not only because of life, but because I have something called an infer inferiority complex. Uh, though I know, I know, I know how that goes. Uh, that's basically what drives everything I do. <laughs> is uh, feeling like you need to be better. But I mean, that's, a whole, that's the whole point of the community is to, to be in a, a place where people are willing and able to help you improve. So don't feel like you have to be like uh, where everybody else is necessarily. I mean, we're all in different stages of our, our artistic development. So it's only natural that some people are gonna be less experienced. 
but you gotta be you gotta be willing to to put yourself out there. But I, I understand. It can be intimidating. Where? zoom in on this one because I feel like there's a, a thing I need to do. I need to make the top of the eye a bit more flat. It needs to be a little bit more mellow looking, I think. It's tricky because his eyes aren't all that <laughs> uh, consistent among the two. Like between the two eyes, there's some difference in the differences in the shape, and it's difficult to know which one to trust. Also, he's kind of cross-eyed, isn't he? I should try to to copy that. Oh, Mr. Ronnie isn't here. I know who you are. Oh yeah, I should be doing more creative prompts in the Discord. I was actually thinking about that earlier today. Um, haven't been utilizing that. I also need to start posting some of the stuff I've gathered for the for the community spotlight. I have I have a few things that uh, I want to post in there that I haven't because I've been trying to figure out if there's a more efficient way to do it, but I think I'm just going to have to do it all manually. Which is okay. I can, I can deal with it. Please fix the bottom lip, it's way too thick. <laughs> it's not even the right shape at the moment. I need to I need to do a lot of tweaking. I wish there was a way to constrain axis on sculpt strokes. Maybe there is, and I just don't know. I should probably start posting the Discord link in other places. If you go to the first Game Byte episode that we did, I have it in the description there. That's the only place where it's publicly uh, accessible. But yeah, it's it's technically public, and people trickle in that watch that particular episode. And if you haven't watched it, uh, go watch it. It's pretty cool. Um, I should probably start putting it in the description for streams as well. In fact, I could just post it in the chat, but I'm bet I'm betting uh, some of the people who are already in the chat are are able to uh, post a link to it. So if, if you want to, feel free, somebody who's already in the Discord, to post the invite link. All right, let's see. I need to bring the bottom of the lip up that'll help thin out part of it and then bring this to the side he's got this weird kind of smile it's called the like the anti duchene smile it's the the type of smile that it is i think that's what it's called where the the lips kind of go straight to the side 
and maybe even somewhat down instead of uh, up when he smiles. And uh, right now he's going a little up, so I think I'm gonna do some tweaking with that. There we go. It's a little closer. He's also got a pretty defined crease right here, so I think I'm gonna try to get that in. What are you doing? You should be not creasing, you should be clay stripping. <laughs> Awkward phrasing. Actually, there's a bit of a crease going up. There we go. Is this from Epic Yarn? Kirby's Epic Yarn? Mad King asks, will you consider doing a stage builder stream? I was actually considering it, but I feel like I'd need an idea first. I have, I mean, again, I don't know how, how interested I am in even making stages in Smash with the stage builder. I definitely want to start making stages in Blender <laughs> and uh, maybe having people make mods of it since I'm not really in the modding scene, I'm like mod adjacent. Um, I know Sean's working on a, a HD remake of the Crystal Cavern dealio for Metal Mario. I'm very excited about that and I kind of want to get in on that particular uh, scene. Not necessarily that stage, but just making levels for mods. Environment art is something that I haven't done a lot of, and it's something I want to get better at. Part of that's coming from uh, making the Bomberman Hero stage, like um, level one from Bomberman Hero. I guess I could plug game bytes and vertical slices. So we're working on a series of things for a a Bomberman HD remake of the first level. Not the whole game, but just the first level. And it probably won't even be playable by the public because it's safer to just make a video of it, demonstrating it. Um, so I, I want more practice uh, with that kind of... Uh, inv I, mean, I, don't even, I don't even know the workflow of... of creating an environment in a lot of modern games, but in Bomberman Hero it's a very grid-based level, so it's more manageable. I feel like it's a good place to start. But there's not as, as many resources that I've been able to find about making environments in games. There was this one article that Andrew posted on the Discord server that was very helpful and insightful in, in seeing the kind of process that people have to go through for that kind of thing. Um, but I definitely want more practice. So I feel like stages in Smash are very manageable. They're pretty small, not a lot to them. But I can also be thinking about level design in a small, sort of bite-sized way with with a level in Super Smash Brothers. I also want to be making like tournament viable, even if they're never used in a tournament. I feel like I'd want my stages to be viable even though those are sometimes the less fun stages. I don't know, it's tricky, because what, what, what would you say is the most interesting legal stage in Smash Ultimate? I don't even know which stages are legal, but it seems like the ones that are less random and more predictable are the ones that people want, and are also fairly balanced as far as size is concerned. Rooster Boots coming in with $10 super chat. My body ain't ready, knees weak, arms are heavy. His body's not ready either, it's, his head is almost ready. In fact, I should start sculpting the ears. I'm so happy, it's, it's actually starting to feel like a, a thing. I was really concerned for a while there that I wouldn't be able to get this to a, a place where I was happy with it. Start 
sculpting this ear. Uh, apply and apply and sculpt. All right. Get rid of the UV map and turn on dynamic topology. All right. What kind of shape does he have? He's got like this. It goes in first, and then it's got like a bump like that. And the proportions are all wrong, so I'm going to undo that real quick and bring this down a bit. Something like that. And this, this top of the ear needs to be a lot closer to the head. are not even right. Oh, Mad King's posting a link to the Discord server. Go ahead and join up if you guys want. Should probably make some people mods. Uh, some of the regulars probably could be mods in, in the uh, the chat here. In fact, why don't I make a couple of you that I I know are helpful? Um, where? Um, how do you make a moderator? Okay, there we go. You are mod. And where is Poco? Have a mod ship. <laughs> so you guys can post links without fear of uh, being hidden or repercussions of any kind. the Oprah says uh, Rin of Jizz yeah everybody who's not on the server already go ahead and hop in everybody's welcome the more the merrier If you aren't logged into discord.com, it might not work properly, so maybe try that. Anybody who's having trouble. Switch this to matte cap also. Oops. Yeah, 
What's my focal length on this lens? I think I'm gonna switch it to 50. All right, let's do some comparisons. bring out some some neckage. I feel like we need to start building out where the, the body would be. The back of the skull definitely needs to be more prominent. A lot more prominent. Whoops. Not texture paint. Not edit mode, what are you doing? <clears throat> Let's see, it's bring in the chin. And then pull the skull out a bit in the back. the opposite of what I wanted to do. The ear is also significantly taller than it should be. Let me go ahead and set origin to geometry so I can scale it along the X. Maybe bring it forward. Where does his neck actually start? This is where this one comes in. Chill. Whoa. Undo, please.
now that I'm looking at it. Well, I guess he's he's opening his mouth a bit, so his chin is a bit more prominent. Hmm, bring this back. He's got a fairly small chin. His ear is still too big, isn't it? Eyebrows can be. <laughs> hmm. I think the brow, just in general, needs to be pulled back on the sides. Jawline, yeah. Good recommendation, Mad King. Let's see. Yes, I have been able to play as the Joker. Set so, that uh, hip. Hi, pow down, hip ow down X. Which one is it? Hip ow or hi pow? just disrupted a large part of this, but I'm okay with it. Let's rotate you along the Z. get some of the brow definition better, and then we'll work on that jawline. I don't know why I'm saying we. We're doing, we're doing this together, guys. The team effort. I should actually probably check on that. <laughs> DJ Thad's in here. Holy cheekbones. Yeah, there's something. I think they're probably too far out, but it's difficult to tell without knowing the focal length. remember a video of you saying Blender is a bit daunting. <laughs> Look at you now. <laughs> Thanks, Super Fry. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting better. Wouldn't say I'm there yet, but uh, slowly improving. Hip pow down. Okay, so it is hip pow, even though there's only one P. Are you guys familiar with the movie or the band The Wonders? Um, their band was spelled O-N-E-D-E-R-S for a while. Like the number one and then Durs 
but everybody saw Oneaters. <laughs> Gotta be careful with those uh, clever names, sometimes they're too clever. What was I doing? I feel like the eyes start a little to the a little outward, like there-ish. Also, I need to give it a little bit more of a curve. Let's do some jaw, jaw work. You can probably hear people shuffling in the background. All right. Yeah. Also, the chin could probably be a little bit less square. That's better, I think. Chill out with the world sling, man. What are you doing? These people want to hear you talk. <laughs> uh, difficult to break some habits. <laughs> Let's make a stage where the music is omni whistling. No thanks. You don't want that. The world doesn't want that. music so good. What is this though? I don't even know what this is. Funky. I like it.
What am I doing? It should be dipping down like that. All right. Whoa. Beat kicked in. going back and forth on the the way the eyes need to lean improvement. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Uh, random chiz. Okay, I made a stage of the logo, but the question is, do we want a legal stage or a more visually pleasing stage where one ledge can't be grabbed? Good question. I don't know. Super Show says, the word warble has two definitions, an angelic sound, or the grossest infection you've ever seen in your life. That's not fair. English shouldn't have those two definitions for the same word. Oh, language. Something's going on with the cheekbone up here. Or the cheek, I should say. Mega Schizen's asking or saying, puppets have a little asymmetrical wonk to him. <laughs> Are you thinking of going back after and wonking him up? Uh, probably not. I'm going to try to make this sort of like the ideal, like the platonic ideal of the design. Platonic ideal. Sound like a huge art nerd. You guys familiar with the uh, the idea of the ideal Plato, Plato's ideal world, where every idea has like an ideal form that exists in the metaphysical world rather than the physical world, where like there's one perfect idea of a chair and we can't fathom it. Every existing chair is just a res like a physical representation of the ideal. It's an interesting. Uh, thing to think about when you're when you're working on character designs and interpretations and redesigns where like in the Pokemon world the uh, the the Pokemon designs are designed in an abstract way right so is the detective Pikachu just a different representation of the ideal Pokemon design questions think deep about it people Chris is in here. You should uh you should get in the, the, the Discord voice chat, man. Unless you're unless you're mobile. Oh Andrew's in here too. Look at that. Whole gang's coming along. Make me want to stream for longer. <laughs> S 
Simon says this is the ideal Reggie. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'd say Reggie is the ideal Reggie. Now all we need is Sean. That's right, Zuper Show. Where's Sean? He's probably busy. He's always busy. Hard to get Sean in uh, in these things. Let me see if I can get some down light. I think that would help to know whether the brows are are right. First save. All right, shadow. Well, the shadow resolution on this isn't very good anyway, so I guess that's not really helpful. Let's go back. I guess I can darken it though. Actually, kind of starting to help me. Yeah, it's pretty lonely in the voice chat, NW player. Nikki in the chat. Why is everybody? Why is everybody now starting to come over to the chat? <laughs> when I've been streaming for two hours. Uh, let's see. I guess if people don't have much better to do at this hour. Other than play Super Smash Brothers or something. Yeah, that shadow's not helping. I'm just gonna turn it off. What would happen to me if I said I'd never played a Pikmin, Galaxy, or any of the Persona or Kingdom Hearts games? You know, Super Show, you should definitely play all of those things. I mean, I guess Kingdom Hearts is sort of an acquired taste, so I don't know that I would necessarily say that that's a must-play. Um, there's pretty divisive opinions about this, the Kingdom Hearts franchise, I'd say. But Pikmin is great. Mario Galaxy is pretty great. Although I imagine it would take some adjusting when it comes to having played Odyssey already and then maybe going back to Galaxy because I'd say Odyssey refined a lot about the movement of Mario. I should, um, I should play the Crash remakes. I know they're on Switch now and I still haven't played them. And I know Spyro's coming to the Switch, right? Was that confirmed already? Every time I make an adjustment to the eyes, I ruin things. But yeah, I should play the Spyro remakes and the, the Crash remakes, because I, I was a Nintendo kid growing up, and so I didn't really get that much exposure to those particular games. Man, having an, an eye that's this close to the nostril is something else. And also this close to the cheek, man. Mr. Ranio says, yeah, I went back to Galaxy 2 a while back, and I remember I spent five minutes trying to throw Cappy. Yeah, I can imagine that can be an impulse. 
I haven't played it in years, and I remember uh, my friend Phil, one of one of the well the other game dev that I work with. Um, it, he played Mario Galaxy for the first time relatively recently, and he said Galaxy One was really rough to him, but then Galaxy Two was like way better, and that was that struck me as interesting because I look at those two games and I, I think they like play exactly the same, but the level design is obviously very different, so. I can see where he's coming from. It's just interesting getting that sort of outsider opinion of a game that a lot of people hold in such high regard as like being perfect. I mean, obviously it's not perfect. Uh, everything can be improved. Otherwise Odyssey wouldn't be as good as it is. Sorry, I just got silent for a second. I was thinking really hard about the uh, the reference. One of the are you saying that one of the Galaxy games has significantly more charm? Oh, Galaxy One, yeah. It's from a story perspective, yeah. Although I would say the levels I think in Galaxy Two were stronger, and maybe even more. Um, narratively interesting as little as n narrative as there is in level design but and at least in mario i mean obviously level design can convey a lot of narrative if you do it right mad king is asking have you ever played any of the professor layton games i've played the curious village and i love it uh, then I never played any of the other ones. I'm not sure why, but I do enjoy that franchise. I, I think it's a great franchise. I always thought Leighton would be a fun addition to Smash, even if he's not necessarily the most, like, quote-unquote, deserving. I mean, I hate to use that word when it comes to character speculation because I mean what does it even mean ooh this one this was well, this was always one of my favorite tracks from Twilight Princess I actually know how to play this on the piano. It's not that difficult. It's not that complex or anything like that, but I did learn how to play it by ear. It was one of my favorites growing up. I'd like to play this song. Michael Floor is asking, are Patreon supporters allowed to join you in live chat? You know what? That's an interesting question. Uh, it's something I've briefly considered. Um, I do have a stream channel on the public Discord that I haven't actually used yet. That could be a, a way to use it. Um, that's definitely something I'll be considering for the future. Uh, I wouldn't say... I'm up for it right now, but that could be fun. I want to I want to get more involved with the patrons once I'm able to really put some thought into how to uh, adapt the Patreon page to the new channel brand. Something that I've wanted to figure out for a while now, but I haven't really had the time to just sit down and figure it out. Because it's very different, like. I don't know that the per video or 
per project model still works for what we're doing now because we have so many things on the burner at once and we're going to be making like streams a lot more so I don't know it's tricky so we might we might end up switching to more of a traditional per month kind of thing on the on the discord server or sorry on the patreon <laughs> Have I played Danganronpa? I have not. I don't really know anything about that series. I'm not even sure what genre it is. Is it an RPG or, or what? I'm back to Mario Galaxy. Favorite Ace Attorney game? I've only actually played one of the Ace Attorney games, the first one. <laughs> Go figure. My my game experience is actually not as broad as I'd like like it to be, but it's so hard to make the time when you're trying to do stuff like this. Phil makes a concerted effort to play games since he's more on the design side, and so it's important to be having, you know, getting that kind of input into your your mind. And it's less important, I would say, still important, but slightly less important for an artist to be playing a lot of games uh, as much as just observing them passively sometimes. Oh, it's a visual novel, okay. Have I tried Baba Is You? It might be a neat game to try to make 3D equivalents for. I have not. I don't even know if I recognize the name. I'll have to check that out. Whistling in Animal Crossing. Oh, is that a person? Oh, Andrew's in here. How's it going? Oh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been here long, or did, did I just notice? Or have you just... I'm always hesitant to, to join because I feel like it makes editing the recaps sl slightly more difficult. No. But <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. Even though you're the one who has to edit them usually, so maybe you should be worried about it. <laughs> hey guys! Chris! Whoa, Chris. It's me, Chris. Hello, Chris. How's Does it Chris going? sound kind of echoey to you? Um, really? Talk, Chris. You sound like you're in an empty room. I am kind of in an empty room. Is it that echoey? Yeah, a little bit. Dang. I was just testing my audio and it sounded good to me. Hmm. Ronio says you should uh, do more whistle covers. Uh... I definitely I want to make a channel d dedicated to whistle covers uh, with ukulele. <laughs> I actually downloaded a uh, hundred dollar ukulele plugin for Logic specifically for that reason, and I Wait, haven't done what? it yet. 
I paid a hundred dollars for a plugin for Logic. What's a, what's a ukulele plugin? For Logic Pro. Like a, a very mm. authentic sounding ukulele instrument. Oh, that's cool, actually. I also bought one for a guitar, just in case. I feel like the the move brush, the grab brush in Blender Sucks. makes me sad. <laughs> yeah. I always <laughs> I have to clean it up after. <laughs> like, significantly. Chris, what you up to? I haven't talked to you in a little while. I'm trying to fix my... Audio. Yeah. Give me a minute. Oh. I don't know this song. Although it reminds me of another song. This was Eno playing. Uh, the program that Omni is currently using is Blender. Blender 2.8 to be specific. I guess I do know this song. Just because of Smash. Any other uh, questions happening in the chat? I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up right now. Not currently. All right. Don't do them, though. People are just tolerating my whistling instead. I feel like I could be tinkering with this eye forever if I don't watch it. I might just okay. be better suited to, to read topology. Do I sound less robotic now? <laughs> yes, you do. Cool. You don't sound robotic, but you do uh, have an echo. No, I don't. He just said I didn't. It's less. It's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Is it noticeable? It's not a big deal. It's just something that... Andrew remarked was was there, but it's not gonna kill anything. Okay. Sorry. No, no. It was empty because I'm waiting on my new couch to arrive. Ooh. Yeah. Furniture. Yeah, it's a pullout couch, so I can have guests. Ooh. Ooh. I'm actually uh, planning on using it for um, later in the year. A bunch of a couple of people are planning on visiting me for. Uh, we're going to all go to New York Comic Con together, which is only like an mm. hour from my place. So a couple of them will do like last year and crash at my place. Last year they had to sleep on the couch, but now they get to sleep on the <laughs> they pull-out couch. they on the couch. <laughs> now they get to sleep on the pull-out couch, so I'm excited. It's cool. Nice. How's your house, Almy? Still making models of it? Uh, yeah. I mean, that particular process is very slow going. Um, but uh, almost ready to move into it finally. Oh yeah. Move into it properly. 
what's left. Oh, well, so I'm still working on the bedroom, but once the office is done, the office is almost completely done. We're just painting it. Then I'm just going to live in that for a yeah. starting Who needs out. to sleep when you can just work forever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a bed in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's nice. How much uh, square feet? I don't actually know. It's not that much, not not too different from my apartment before, as far as square footage. So like probably a thousand or so. Do you miss your old apartment? Mm, I miss being able to have my own space at the moment. Uh, but once I'm Fair. properly moved in, I'll have that back. I don't miss anything particularly uh, about that apartment in particular. It was a to, uh, pretty small apartment. To Brobuscus, we are planning on at finishing Rayman eventually. Oh, yeah. But... That's a really nice timeline. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Do you want to yeah. detail that a little bit more, Omni? Um, on finishing Rayman? I mean, all we have to do left is uh, retopologize some stuff and then materials. Although that's a lot, so I don't know why I said all I have to do. <laughs> also rigging. Yeah, and rigging. Oh, that It'll be done in oh, Rigging should be super... Oh, yeah. I think that would, that'll be nice. No we wins. should still use <laughs> Rigify. Well, I'm sure the face will still have a lot of controls. Yeah, well, true. the face are going to be all custom controls, so yeah. Uh, Christopher wants to know what you're going to do with this Reggie model after you finish him. Uh, gonna I'm going to hand it off to the world. A shrine. <laughs> it's just going to be publicly available, I think. And uh, people can do with it whatever they want with it. Modem and the Smash. What made you want to do this in the first place? Um, so Jeff Keeley commissioned uh, a guy named Sam Spratt, I think his name was, to, to yeah. make a poster of Reggie. And it featured all of the different sort of... Yeah. Reggie's that have been made in uh, his in his career. One of them was the puppet, and I was like, you know what? That'd be a fun 3D model to make. It's simple, but it's fun, and people recognize it. So I feel like it had a lot of potential for people. Sam Spratt is a very use. famous artist, by the way. Very, very famous internet artist. What am I doing wrong here? He does a lot of portraits, so it's kind of cool mm -hmm. that he has to do Reggie's. Oh, yeah. It's awesome to see Reggie's on Twitter now. Yeah, he's following uh, some people that follow me, which is interesting. It makes me <laughs> think that I have a chance to be followed. He's following what? He's like, Yo Schiller is being... Fo uh, he follows Yo Schiller, he follows Roger's Base. Oh. Um, you know, a lot of the people in the Smash community. Uh, so I feel like maybe <laughs> so if he sees like this he once it's finished... <laughs> Maybe that might have been one of the uh, incentives for me to do this. Yeah. Just maybe. Hey, Spencer's in the chat. Spencer, hey, Spence. how's it going? What's up, buddy? Long time no see. How's the Canada? <laughs> the Canada. <laughs> we should we should definitely do another con as just attendees. I know we talked about oh, it already. Been talking about it. Yeah. We just haven't decided on which one to do, and I mean. I'm, I'm I'm a big uh, fan of just workshops and art stuff in general. Where I mean I mean yeah, it's cool to go to like a like a Comic Con type thing where you're just an attendee and you're like enjoying the you know the celebration in a way. But I think as artists and creatives too, it, it'd be nice to get one that's more orientated towards stuff that we really care about. You know? Yeah. By the way, how's the volume levels on Discord? Uh, I don't know if people are quiet or not. Let me know. Am I still on the ear? Yes. Let's see. <laughs> There's so many projects that uh, Andrew's working on right now, I was gonna ask him about them, but uh, which one <laughs> do I ask about? There's one that we haven't, or, well, I guess we have sort of shown a little bit of it. Um, 
you want to just go ahead and talk about uh, Vertical Slice 2. Are, are you comfortable letting people hear about it? You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, right? Uh, S K. Oh, I see. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the. Can I? I mean, well, I'm not gonna reveal it's your thing, but. Make up your mind, Andrew. <laughs> I don't know. Moborg mids. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, it's out there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be so no, that's it. Then we'll just leave him with that. Yeah, that's that's the game. Mobile mids. I was surprised at how quickly you you know, with some nice art direction that you were able to get as far as you did because Honestly, I kind of was also surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you so would I I mean I don't know how far you've gotten. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you've modeled a character, you've UV unwrapped in texture and materialized them, you know, they got materials too. Are they rigged yet? They are rigged. <sighs> They are animated in engine currently. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. So do you want to say what it is now, or? <laughs> hmm. Just, I mean, it's it's just us, and yeah, it's just us. Just a nice private conversation. You don't have to tell yeah. us. Yeah. It's not like people are gonna watch this stream anyway. Yeah, and also cut it out of the recap. <laughs> <laughs> I so mean, it should be pretty happy. obvious based on the Moboards mids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's pretty off-putting, you know? It could be anything. <laughs> I also don't really know what else to... Say? Say about it, because it's in pretty early stages still. Well, what general. are you doing? Give me, give, me the, give me the cliff notes. Currently, or like the end goal? Yeah, what's the, what's the project? Yeah. That's your end goal. What are you working on? What are you working towards? Um, so, it should be, dang, I still don't really know how much I want to disclose. <laughs> really? I mean, at least say something. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten pretty far, and I know you think there's a lot, I mean, you can at least, you could surely present what you have so far. I guess if, if, ask me a specific question. And then I'll answer it. Are you making uh, a playable game? It depends what you mean by that. Uh, it won't be playable by the public. None of the stuff that we make is yeah, probably going to be playable but... by the public. So you're doing a vertical slice, which is similar to that Bomberman uh, level that yeah. you recreated, where it's like you're yeah. reimagining something that was classical, that hasn't been around for a while. New spin on it. Modern spin on it, if you will. Uh, this time, instead of being Rayman, it's going to be... Oh, it'll be Snowbird Kids 3. Yeah. You but it'll, Snowbird it'll, Kids? it'll be like... It'll be like if a Snowbird 3 existed, but they remade a level from Snowbird Kids 1 in Snowbird Kids 3. If that makes sense. So it's like Mario Kart 8. So it's like how Peach's Castle is in Mario Odyssey. I guess, like, because we want to bring in mechanics to uh, kind of bring it up to par with modern standards. Right. What's the character you modeled? Oh, we should also. Hmm. Should we also disclose our our guest artist? Oh yeah, our collaborator. Collaborator artist. I thought uh, your yeah. collaborator artist was acting as a bit of an art director on this project. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That's, yeah, she's the, the art role. director. Say your name. Smy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyone recognize uh, yeah. that name? She's got quite a few followers, I mean, on Twitter. Um, she does a lot of Snowboard Kids fan mm -hmm. art as well. Snowboard Kids, Splatoon, um, other things of that ilk. Too. Uh, so that's, that's literally calling to all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's funny. Uh, if you want to look her up, she's Smy. Smy Art, although I don't think it's it's my underscore. I don't remember. Smy mm. Art. 
Uh, it's just slash smy. It's just at smy. Nope, it's not. Don't go there. It is That's smy. a guy with a mustache. Um, <laughs> smy art. Wait, I got it. Yeah, it's smy art. No space, no underscore. And her pinned tweet is uh, some really cool concept art of all sorts. Well, illustrations, really, not concept art of, of cool stuff. So that'll give you a taste for what uh, what you can expect from that project. Yeah, so basically she's creating like the vision of what the game will look like. And we'll, we'll do our best to replicate it in, in a 3D environment. Trace D. Yeah, plus she's also giving you, uh, obviously, critique on your 3D models and helping you get a little closer to those. Yeah, the feedback's really cool. Yeah. It's nice to work with other artists like that. Both, you know, both sides of it, as an art director and as someone just being the artist, you know, it's nice to collaborate and kind of expand on your... Uh, I feel like it's it's a really good um, lesson to, learning experience, you know, because you get to really see other people's point of view. So I'm sure you're going to pick up some tools of trade uh, just from her experience and all these great, you know, 2D cartoon-esque characters and, and your experience in 3D and melt somewhere in between in the middle. So yeah. it's looking really good, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Who's the character? Hmm? Oh. Uh, there's a dog in the, in the original <laughs> two uh, similar kids games featured prominently on on things like UI and also as a character in the world and so we are also as an unlockable character in Snowboard Kids too. Oh that's right. So we're doing a little doggy. And we're actually changing it up a little bit because this is a sequel. Sort of like carrying over from two as if the other games weren't made because the other games that came after that sort of <laughs> diverge a lot from the original art direction. Did they and, not uh, get, were they bad? I, mean, I think there's well, only one after two, which was DS, was which killed the series. <laughs> right. Um, it's just the art style on that, that one is so different. Is that the one that's that you're talking about? Yeah, I think so. Um, if you, if, at least if you don't consider Plus as a sequel, which is the expansion to one. Right. Ronio just asked if we have any future plans for collaborations. We don't have to mention the specific, but do we plan on collaborating with others in the future? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's there's gonna be more collaborations down the road. As uh, as a community continues to grow, we're gonna try to find more opportunities to work with other people. So if you know anybody who might be interested in, you know, give us uh, give us their name or give them a holler. <laughs> Tell them to join the Discord. I don't know. It's tricky because a lot of the people that I respect are sort of like me. They like to be like very by themselves and work on their projects solo. And I feel like as much as it's empowering to know how to do all of that stuff, it's also limiting in how much you can accomplish. So if you're able to get these people together, you, you can do so much more. But yeah. it's hard sometimes to get those people to be interested when they're focusing on their own passion projects. I would, I would definitely uh, say for myself in my own experience as an illustrator over the last couple of years, I've definitely really seen the power of, of <laughs> it sounds a little cheesy, the power of teamwork. Like work, <laughs> working with other people, you know, is, is, uh, it's, it's just the best, man. It's the best for the individual artists, I feel. Like it, it can definitely be a little consuming and you might get you know into a, a certain headset but i don't think it's a bad headset usually when you're around people other artists like us uh it's it's like typically you're you're there kind of supporting them and they're supporting you and it's this uh uh symbiotic relationship um where where it's just like you're doing the best you can and that brings out the best in the people around you and so on mm -hmm. you know vice versa and it's a really Interesting thing, and it's I've been thinking about it a lot lately as a, about it as a freelance illustrator, someone who works from home. Uh, you know, just it's it's interesting to go from the qual the benefits of, of working alone and, and having you know your own voice be the one that is you know throughout the entire project all the way to the end uh, to working on a team where it's like not lost, but it's amongst other voices. 
that can definitely that collaborative uh, uh, project sort of style can can really lead to some areas. I'm sure, like I was just saying with Andrew here, I'm sure Andrew is while working on the snowboard kids uh, vertical slices is, is discovering new things that he's he's probably good or great at that he didn't even know before or maybe he had an idea but he didn't really get the chance to explore that further so it's kind of cool to just just watch it and also to be a part of it as an artist great and i think one big lesson that i'd love to spread to any artists out there is like collaborate because you know it, it, you never know where it will lead to you know it could lead to a friendship it could lead to a project that you're really proud of or it could just uh lead to some something you know that you can just say you did those are all good things so Collaborate. We should do that more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know there's people who uh, follow us on Twitter that are interested in in collaborating. Mm. I think some of them aren't aware that the Discord is now public. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Jordana mate. I know you've been trying to get in, and I haven't seen you on the <laughs> on the Discord server yet. So I don't know if you're watching, but uh, it's it's there. Just watch the game bite. That's how you get to the link. I mean, what's that little box in the right, upper right of the screen? Oh, those are a bunch the of brush. references that are just... No, the, the right. Where it says brush. Mm. Crease uh, brush. There's like a little pr uh, thumbnail of the crease oh, brush. Oh, that's just the, uh, <clears throat> the sculpt tool detail view, I guess. They moved it from... from 2.79 it so used to be like an example of what your brush would do yeah basically okay. like the parameters for your brush mm -hmm. does is there any way to like modify it and watch a live like that thumbnail change live or no no the thumbnail is just uh from a list of okay. other things in fact i don't know why this is this has nothing in it chris we gotta convert omni to ZBrush. brush yes well <laughs> I want to. It's not like I, I don't want to learn it. I just need to find the time. Make the time. I, really. I, never did do that. I mean, I love ZBrush. I'm actually, it's a fallback for me. I've talked a bit about it. Like the last five years, I've become pretty big in ZBrush. It's the program I taught myself how to use. I never, I had one class in college for it and it lasted a month. And, I didn't even learn that there were different brushes, so <laughs> that was well, yeah. I, I feel like school can be weird sometimes for in those regions of things. Regions like location? <laughs> like or? learning things that you should know. learn, or? I feel like yeah. it's, it's such a, what's really great in ZBrush up this whole stream, but to, what's really great about ZBrush is it's a very heavily community-based uh, program and so like there's ever since i've been using it there's been constant updates and what's cool about it is the updates are basically they're free for life uh if you buy zbrush once you get all the updates for free and they're significant and it's cool because there's obviously a whole industry of people using this application and a lot of the time some of zbrush's greatest updates were just people being like hmm how could this be better like like what would make my my application better oh it'd be like this tool like oh automated uh read apology or or like an on the fly you know sculpting topology uh, whatever you want to call it uh, you know like all these you know simple things like let's group objects <laughs> like stuff like that it's a no-brainer and it's just it's such a it's such a big help in the, in the process and so people literally especially when i was first learning about it people would just come up with these ideas on how to make the application better and they would make them themselves and then just post them on the community and then ZBrush would purchase them from those people and actually like refine them and then add them to the program. So a lot of a lot of ZBrush is just the community being like, what could make this better? You know? Mm -hmm. I, I feel mean, like the same could be said for Blender also. Yeah. Yeah. But I think like the baseline for Blender is so different. Like you're not gonna get that many people contributing to the sculpt tools because the sculpt tool on a baseline level is not as good as, as ZBrush. So people, I think, focus their energies on, on the other facets of Blender. Mm. I think Blender's I made the clip on his good... chin too strong, but I don't care, I like it. But it's got a lot of good things about it, man. I've been Learning, trying to yeah. learn it for the last couple of, 
probably like a month or two now, and it's been really great. It's it's interesting because now in my career as a 3D artist, I've learned a couple programs: Maya, ZBrush, Keyshot, Blender. I'm trying to learn Blender, and it's and I'm sure there are, there are other ones too that like I, I haven't been learning now that are just as different as the last and. I think that I, I, there's a lot of like, oh, ZBrush is really good at this one thing, Maya's really good at this one thing, you know, Blender's good at this one thing, and it's cool to like be able to take those little bits and, and try to utilize the best of each program, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I've, I've been in, in the 3D art, I guess, industry for a bit, in like back when I was first learning it in 2010, nine years ago. It was a very different place. and. It's definitely become a lot more uh, accessible now. Like it's cool how how YouTube, you know, there's Gumroad tutorials, there's YouTube tutorials, there's uh, so many people out there. Just like if you have a very specific question about your program, there's a good chance you can just Google it. And like so many people use ZBrush, they probably run into the same error and have like twenty thousand different ways to fix that problem. Right. So it's a it's a never been a better time to be a three D artist. I've been watching a couple of, not TED Talks, but sort of like, you know, those sort of talks about the future <laughs> where, where uh, people believe that these these devices are going and, or these applications are going. And it's kind of cool and amazing to think that like, as time goes on, the, the little the little things that we spend time learning in these are like, like how to read apologize are probably gonna be like very Absolutely. automatic in the next, you know, decade. <laughs> I'm excited like, for read topology to be automatic. Oh god, yeah. ZBrush has a pretty good their new what is it? Z Z Remesher, which is Z an Z automatic uh, Yep, Z Remesher 3. It's an automatic uh, 3D um, re remodeler, I guess. Yeah, it's just re it recreates a topology. Uh, and you can and you've been able to for a while now kind of lead it in a direction like you can you can control it. And there's more ability to control it now than ever. And uh, it's, just, it's just interesting to see, I guess, yeah. It's cool to see how much that's come. I remember a couple years ago when Zero Mesher first came out, I was like blown away. So I, up until that point was obviously doing all my all my uh, topology by hand and <laughs> that can be tedious and tricky. But and in some ways it's still the best way to go about it, uh, you know, for certain projects, but. Yeah, it really depends. Yeah. It's cool to see technology push and, you know, these communities grow and, and get more money pushing them and see what uh, the results are. You know, what, you know, look at a couple years ago, Blender didn't even have this sculpting stuff in it, so <laughs> it evolves quickly. It's interesting. I can't wait to see where it goes and continues. It's kind of, I, I was, I had a moment of like <laughs> shock or fear, I guess, recently while watching one of it almost seemed like like they were creating algorithms for essentially creating concept art. So like you could spit in uh, into this program, I, I, like, uh, you know, for the example that was in that video, it was like someone was trying to do a concept for like a swamp house or something. And so they built all the assets and then they built an algorithm to just make a bunch of different concepts. And it would be like, oh, this concept's the five or ten concepts, and they're all really different from the next. You know, this one's got so many windows, this one's so many stories tall, this one's got so many chimneys or, or whatever. And it's crazy because as a concept artist, like, you know, you spend hours trying to devise these different concepts in right. the future that might just be automated. <laughs> like, yeah, It's you know? a scary thought a little bit. I mean, it's interesting because it's good as a jumping off point. And I mean, there's neural net processors or neural network, you know, the, the the idea of a neural network getting applied to a lot of different artistic tasks is somewhat scary like even music you've got neural networks that are able to compose music which is like what that's supposed to be a human thing how is a, a machine doing that mm -hmm. and uh on the one hand it's like oh well they're going to take our jobs but on the other hand it's probably only going to be a supplement to those creative professions um yeah, rather than a replacement now. What a thanks, all. thanks, Andrew. <laughs> what a what really kind of calmed my mind about the subject is at the end of the day, no matter what, you're gonna need an art director because as as cool as these this part of the process is, like the concept process or the or the you know the rigorous like 
even in comics, like like outlining and, and then shading and all that, which could totally become obsolete with computers creating. Like like even looking at the at the Newsy brush, they've got a really cool tune shader that replicates 2D art pretty well. And a lot of people have been kind of going in that direction lately too. It's very cool to see automated programs make uh, these bounds, these leaps and bounds in terms of like uh, art in general. But I think that no matter what you're gonna good storytellers or good uh, people at the helm, at the wheel of these projects, because, you know, there's no automatic, you know, Picasso, Picasso. There's no, there's no, without a, a good lead, the, it's just a, it's just a tool really. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you're never gonna get that great movie or that fantastic, an automated system. <laughs> at least I hope not. <laughs> so. <laughs> not in our lifetime, maybe. Yeah, I feel like outside of our lifetime, that is possible. And, and after that, you know, who cares? We're, we're dead, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> they're not taking my job; they're taking my son's yeah. job. <laughs> I mean, I mean, sure, I'm sure one day, like, going to be able to just think of something. And it'll be in front of you as some sort of medium, and that will be a whimsical tool. But there's still going to be a need for the people to create, like the specifically the most, you know, the best of it whatever it may be. Are you, how much of this Reggie are you trying to model? Character or just the head? Uh, the whole character, but not in the stream, obviously. Uh -huh. I probably won't even do the body in the stream. I'll just do it on my own. Yeah. Are the eyebrows separate mesh? Yes. Do you have them like? They are shrink wrapped. Sucked. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I love cool. this modifier. It's so good. What's that? How's that work? It basically it seeks out the closest point or the, cl the closest surface surface point bleh, on the object the target object and then just projects it down to that point so you can <laughs> <laughs> you can do that kind of stuff it's like a i think in zbrush it's called like z project or oh is it yeah Projection. i never really use that that much I, uh, program I'm just learning now, a new program that I've never used before, that I just got into in the last month, oh god, I don't think that one's crazy, is, uh, it has a projection thing too, yeah. I think it's common. I never really used it in ZBrush though, huh? Really? Are you watching me do stupid things with the... Yeah, that was kind of crazy. These crying eyebrows. I wonder who has the Reggie method. Maybe it's in the Smithsonian. Nose needs more volume. Spencer asked uh, in the photo reference I'm using. A screen cap there? Yeah, it's from the E3 puppet show dealio. But he's, he's asking specifically, is it the new... Is it the new what? Neutral expression, like no... Uh, no pretty much. At least the one that's on the top there. Um, there's one here at the bottom that's slightly less neutral. But he's always kind of got that sort of smile, quite kind of smile. That was a really good intro to, I think, last, you know, half decade, I can think back. That was a really good intro to it. felt pretty magical. Yeah. It felt pretty cool. Good intro to E3. Oh yeah, that was before we knew about Star Fox Zero. I want to say it was 20... That was the intro, yeah. The intro to yeah. Star Fox Zero. Yeah, that was literally the intro because they all turned into Star Fox characters. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think this is probably as close as I'm going to get to something final-ish in this stream, so I'm probably not going to spend too much longer, and I'm basically just 
fine tuning things. That'll probably be easier to fine tune once I retopologize it anyway. So, oops. Hopefully, uh, it all. Whoa, Blender, chill out. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, it'll shape up. I'm not super happy with it quite yet, but it's getting there. It's really hard to know without knowing the focal length that they used for the camera, so I'm kind of winging it. But I think we're, we're pretty close. What do you guys think? That's great. That looks really good. Are you gonna? So are you planning on like rendering this and everything, like trying to get it to one for one? Uh, I think I'm actually gonna make a sort of a game topology for it, so that people can put it wherever they want. Do you think you're gonna give them like, fabric skin? Yeah, materials? I really want to see that. that <laughs> it's pair. a good question. Uh, I thought about it, just making it like like Mario style skin rather than making it look like puppet so making it like the the actual flesh version in game or it from like Mario promotional art kind of style oh, okay. using that as a, as a as a basic a basis I'm excited to see how you do the hair though yeah the hair could be Please. it's a good question because he's got the, the, the really curly hair and Mario games yeah he's got that do that kind of Morales detail hair. Until at least until Odyssey, so I guess we could, we could. Hey Andrew, you good at uh, <laughs> Odyssey style hair? <laughs> you want to help me out with this? Modeling the hair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also running. <laughs> yeah. Wait. I don't know. Part I don't feel hair. like Reggie's hair is like. Oh. Yeah, we can do that, but that wouldn't really be game ready. Yeah, I guess we'd have to do hair. I guess it would just be a, a bump map would be good enough as long as you've got the ridge of the hairline, right? We have to get Sean back on this. <laughs> Why? Because he helped him with the, the hair for uh, Bo Kid. And that was a nightmare I, <laughs> for him. That, that was a nightmare. <laughs> but everybody loves Bo Kid. Bo Kid's great. I love Bo Kid. I love seeing the fan art where they take Bo Kid and mod it or, or just render it in different ways. Very fulfilling. I saw one this last week where they they were bow kid and they tried to make her look like hat kid. Hmm. They modified the model? No, just like 2D drawing. Oh, okay. Uh Git Mads wants to know when this model will be complete. <laughs> that's a that's a <laughs> long <laughs> <laughs> Loaded question. Uh, I'd like it to be sooner rather than later, obviously. But when when is anything ever real? <laughs> when it's when it's on the internet, it's <laughs> <laughs> so it's done. When it's in people's hands, I guess. I don't know. Quick, everybody watching this, pick up your computer and put it in your <laughs> hands. So I have been kind of absent in the Smash scene for a bit. Apparently the Joker is out and everybody loves him. Do yeah. you guys feel this way? He's pretty cool. Not my favorite character, yeah, like but him. he's fun. Did they announce any of the other characters yet? They nope. did not. I think they'll probably announce all of them at E3. Um, I don't I know. I think they'll do one at E3. I don't know. I feel like might as well just drop a couple, at the very least. Just one? What do you think will be yeah. at E3, if not that? I feel like they, I, I do feel like they do one at E3. Maybe two. I don't know. Oh, come on. They gotta do more than that. Well, they are sh trying to stretch it out until 2020. February so. 2020, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, just leave one. I'm sure, I mean, even if they announced the other, what's it, five characters, four characters, I think that you have the six months, and in six months span, you could drop a couple, you know, at a time, two, two, one. But yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I, I hadn't played Smash since Piranha Plant, so it seems like I only ever play Smash when a new character comes out. Did I 
select the right object. Yes. I still haven't played since Prone Plant, but... <laughs> that's okay. Mm. I actually just bought a PS4. <laughs> oh, really? Playing with the enemies. Yeah, well... I, or are you playing Spider-Man? After, after, you know, seven months of just envying everyone having Spider-Man, <laughs> I, I had to get it for the Spider-Man. I feel like I have to wait until PS5. That's, that's not, like not till next year. No, I can wait a year. Yeah, I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you uh, get mad? Is also kind of wondering how long it takes for us to make a character. Oh, well, maybe not us, just in general. But that's kind of kind of also a huh? difficult question to answer. Yeah, it really what depends. Um, I mean, it can take like a month sometimes, depending on what kind of scope you have. Wait, like several, we? several months. What yeah, was the question? Like, um, it was, how long it, was... it takes to finish, like, make a complete, complete model, a character. like, for, Smash for production, anything? or for anything, I guess. Like, anything? I don't know. I did a... Depends on the character, yeah, but yeah. I feel like, on average, you probably... If we had the opportunity to work together and like the schedule freedom, I figure a month per character makes about right. I'm trying to but remember how long like... Bo Kid took. Was it two months or something like that? Yeah, but we weren't all free, and we just kind of yeah. It was pretty like on and off process. I'm designing a character right now, and it's a pain. But also for, like, I don't know, for Mr. Dog, I don't know how it was so quick, but I think we had the proportions down in, like, a week or two weeks, like, a week and a half or two weeks. I and think, then after that, it was like, we're fine, mate, mostly. I think having that approach of just chunking out a bunch of cubes and subdividing them to death really expedited the process of figuring out, like, the block out. So I'm glad we did that. I think we'll do that more often. We gotta forward. show that uh, unsubdivided <laughs> model in the, yeah. in the game bite. Guys, look up Alex Hoyle on Twitter. That, that's the inspiration for us trying that process, that workflow. Spencer's asking how long, perhaps for specific parts of the process, like how long would it take us to re-apologize character? I can speak from experience myself on retopology. I just had to retopologize a character a couple weeks ago. It took me about a day. Mm. That wasn't a really complicated character. That was a ma completely manual retopology. I don't know. Yeah. What, do, what would you guys say? Break down the process. Um, <laughs> because that's good for, for us. For a character with the complexity of like Bo Kid, for example, from Hat in Time, it took. I don't know, a few days, like two or three days to do. At least the amount of hours it took was around two or three days. Probably spread across a week or something, but a couple of days worth of hours. So not too bad. Retopology, depending on where you start, uh, can actually be pretty quick. Well, it's funny because I feel like out of the entire process can definitely be the longest step. It can be. It, it's, it's so hard to really make a, a, generaliza yeah. a generalization. Why don't we, why don't we give an example it. of a specific tree? I mean, you're talking Bokid. I'm trying to think of the process for Bokid. Well, Bokid... So first was the concept. Then first, we the well, we got the concept from, from Gears for Breakfast, and then... Yeah. We did the low poly first, rather than the high poly, which was weird. Um, <laughs> but that made the high poly go pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So then you read the poly. No, you don't have to read the apologize now. Right. Yeah. Then you UV unwrap, which honestly, UV unwrapping could take six hours max. It's really not. So with nowadays tools, UV unwrapping be great. I feel like UVs and textures are the things in 3D that needs to change the most still. What do you mean by that? I feel like they've 
been updated really well. And I have, I mean, honestly, it's the easiest part of the process. I think the only part, well, the thing that's annoying is if you want to make changes, like if you UV unwrap it all and then you paint all the textures on, and then you're like, wait, I want to add on more to the geometry or like uh, move this around, but all my UVs are already packed and I already painted on top of them, so yeah, I either can't or I have to redo the paintings. Hmm. Yeah, you kind of you're locked in once you decide that the apology is done. So, ideally, you want to have that finalized before you UV unwrap. Pixar had a pretty good, um, like, work around. No, no. <clears throat> they made some new technology for textures that was, it seems pretty promising, but it hasn't been standardized in any way yet. But they use it a lot, where you basically have unlimited resolution, and the uh, it's like, it's paired with the geometry that's in a way that it's not paired with the UVs. You don't need to unwrap it. It's interesting. Oh, it's like spent? a vector map for the. Hmm? Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, it's like a vector map for the geometry. And it, I don't know. I wish that it was more used or that more programs picked it up, but. Yeah. Spencer was asking if we made the in game model for Bo Kid. And the answer is yes. yes. We did make both the model for the render we and the, the model. Are we in the credits though? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Okay. I don't know. Probably yeah. not. Yeah, I'm kind of used to it. That's okay. P textures. I, I never know how outsourced work like that gets credited sometimes. Honestly, though, even when I was working on film stuff, like nine times out. Right, the studio, let alone the individuals. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't care too much about yeah. that particular yeah, one, I mean, but. I mean, we get the joy of knowing we we did it. So. I mean, people are aware of it. Like people. Yeah. Mention us a lot of the time when when they post that render for any reason. People are like, oh yeah, it's that Smashified render. Uh, uh -huh. Now they have to say it's that Curiomatic render. Yeah. Oh yeah. To the wash here I think that's how you say the H was here I think that's it but it is you're right it is PTEX that's what Pixar called it have you ever done CAD Andrew you have right I haven't yeah, I've learned some Fusion 360. It's pretty cool. Spent the last, I want to say, three weeks learning CAD for something I'm working on. It's It was a real headache at first, but now I love it a lot. Yeah, it's it's cool how it's, it's... Yeah, it's nice how you can just, like, don't have to worry about topology at all, but you have to worry about a lot of other things. Operations, uh, order of operations, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, basically, it's that. And I feel like you would like it a lot on me with your know, Probably. Like I like the technical it. stuff. It's cool. It's great. I was thinking about it. Or what were you saying, Chris? Oh, I was just saying it's it's great uh, for hard surface modeling. That's what I'm using it for. I was thinking about this morning what it would be like to model a character in a CAD program. Or like how... I know it'd be very weird and that's not what it's made for, but like... What would the process be to make a game-ready character in a CAD program? Well, you'd have to export it, right? Somehow. Yeah. Because you need to have it triangulated for it to work in a game. I don't know. It's an interesting question. Very I mean, you don't typically make characters in something like CAD usually, right? Because it's very right. mechanically oriented. Yeah. I guess you could make a robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess, yeah, that is true. 
I guess I just mean like organic models in general in CAD. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen people do it and it's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm watching, uh, I was watching, not tutorials, but I've been trying to study this one artist named uh, Vitaly. He works for Boston Dynamics creating like actual functional mm -hmm. robots and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy complex, the stuff he does. And I, not only does he use CAD for you know, hard surface modeling, but he'll also mix it in with like, you know, some robots have like outer, not skins, but like, like membranes, material, like fabrics and stuff. It's kind of cool to see him do all of that in these CAD programs because it's just mind blowing. I don't know. I mean, again, it's, it's a really mostly niche and you're not going to need it for like anything besides building robots, but luckily I'm building robots. <laughs> <laughs> I know he does a lot of, uh, Stuff in Moto 3D also. I remember downloading Moto a couple years ago, and and it was very difficult, and I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a while ago. Maybe I could retry. I feel like that's how. I feel like that's how everything I've learned has been. That's how Blender was also. I think I opened it and then I closed it and didn't use it for like four years. Like me, <laughs> well, you did it sooner. Yeah, don't do that, kids. Uh, if you open Blender and it's scary, just ignore it and try it. I think I did that in like 2006. <laughs> what? I don't already know how to use this? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, when you've been entrenched in certain programs for so long, it's hard to start a new one. Yeah, I was pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I was just 13. But, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, DJ Fed was saying uh, rigging takes up most of the of most of the process nowadays. I can agree with that, especially if you're making a really robust rig from scratch. Uh, it's a very long yeah, and arduous you process. Know, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I for characters did I realize you know what's good about rigging is you can outsource and pay someone else. To do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost it's like part programming, part modeling, part engineering. It's it's a very, very intense process that a lot of artists just completely ignore or shy away from because it's so involved. And when you're in a big company, you know, those production pipelines have you compartmentalized. So there's people who are dedicated to making rigs and you don't have to touch it if you're a sculptor or something like that. Hey man, support your artists out there. You don't want to, if you don't want to be a rigger, you want to just be a concept artist or a model, wrap, texture, or anything of the above, and you, you know, yeah, go, go pay someone else to do it. <laughs> it worked. You might, you know, might. I mean, I, I spent a bit. I, I was trying to learn. Uh, I was trying to learn. How to, how to rig and, and pose and all that in, uh, in Blender. And I think that to an extent, if you plan on doing professionally, you should have an idea on how to do it and you know what works and what doesn't. But at the same time, you know, don't feel like you have to figure out everything. But also at the same time, if you, if you want to figure out everything, you can do that also. Sure. If you would like. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> if you're like Andrew and me, and you have to do everything yourself. And Chris. Yeah, I, I, I Chris likes handing things off. He's he's reasonable, not like us. <laughs> yeah. Usually, uh, when I work on the project, they, that's why we finish them. Because <laughs> you guys just, you know, love to just... <laughs> Start going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I feel like it's every day where Andrew's like, let's start a new project. <laughs> hey, don't get me wrong. I love that stuff. The stuff I'm working on right now, just like, oh man, that's a crazy idea. Let's do it anyway, you know? But at the same time, you have to know when to be like, ooh. Sit down and finish something. Yeah. Step away for the crazy idea. I gotta, gotta finish something. I gotta put something out. I mean, not for the sake of, um, that's a whole other, you know, um, 
how do you how often do you post what do you post i, I still feel your gut about what and when i feel like it's you do your best work when you're you know in that happy place but um at the same time you gotta put something out and you can't just have a bunch of unfinished things you know you gotta have something and that probably just comes from me working in, in the industry knowing that there's deadlines and you need Eat food, make yeah. money. <laughs> I mean, the stuff that we're commissioned to do, we finish <laughs> because we have to. But yeah. our personal projects, very often, we end up not finishing them. Well, there was that uh, that uh, video I said trying to finish. No. You're never going to get your project to be exactly as you want it to be now. But twenty of those projects later, you might be able to get a closer than you did. You know, just struggling through the ones just put stuff out and get better at everything and eventually you'll be in a place where you can can do the things you don't think you can right now and it's just a, a lot of uh you know just not giving up on it nin just asked us if if you're envisioning this month felt like it is here or if it's, we, we're talking about that before yeah, it's. I th I'm thinking it's going to be kind of rendered in the style of Mario promo art, key art, uh, with actual like skin material on it rather than making it look like a puppet. So I'm kind of making it like this is the uh, the official art upon which the puppet was based on. I'm like kind of reverse engineering it in a way. So it's going to be, you know. As if it's like in the world of Mario, I guess. Spencer says, Omni, you should stream work on your Rhythm Heaven animated, or reanimated scenes. Kevin showed me your chorus kid and he looks amazing. Uh, yeah. I could, I could even open up the chorus kid one right now if you want, because I'm going to be wrapping it up anyway. Um, Have you animated the chorus kid yet? I've got the head rig done. I haven't done the body yet. But I, let me go ahead and open it. Might as well. One sec. Where are you at? Quick, quick. He's going to sleep. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, this little, little guy. Simplify is on. Let me turn it off. Uh, or at least up the subdivisions. So this is Chorus Kid. He, uh, he moves. He's got uh, this face. <laughs> and he's got this face. So if I scrub through, I can see him like opening his mouth and closing it. I love the bloom effect from Eevee render. It just looks so good. Um, let me show you the rig. It's pretty silly. Uh, where the overlay's off. Yeah, OK. So this is what the rig looks like right now. It's pretty dumb, uh, but it works. So I've got this uh, system where the top of the face can move with this bone, and then the jaw does this, and then I've got some shape keys that control um, the width of the mouth. So if I hide this armature real quick and then just tinker with this, uh, I can control the width of the mouth that way. And there's there's not a lot of movement that this has to do because it's only really opening his mouth two different ways. So I'm not concerned about being able to do a ton of expressions or anything like that. It's a very single purpose uh, model. And uh, I'm sure people who are more experienced with rigging are wondering why the heck I didn't do a certain thing a certain way. I'm, I'm totally improvising when it comes to this kind of stuff. So, but yeah, Super there you Show. go. Super Show just said that we should do the Yoshi meme. Yeah, <laughs> so many yeah. people have recommended that I do that. I think I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Um, so I guess let me go back to uh, the other file before we end up end the stream. Reggie. 
Uh, DJ that I could use drivers for the shape keys, but I was lazy. <laughs> and I didn't feel like it. So I could hook them up, but I, I, I just didn't do it. Um, there's no reason I couldn't. Other than I don't have a ton of experience doing it. So every time I have to do drivers, I kind of get frustrated. So I'm like, I don't, I can just keep frame it. It's whatever. It's a six second clip. I don't really need to have this all that automated. <laughs> Addist was here. Now it's Reggie. You're happy. So yeah, I guess I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. It's been over three hours. Wow. Okay. Went like an hour and a half longer than I was intending to, but made good progress. I'm pretty happy with this head and the body's going to be a lot simpler, not as interesting. So I'm probably just going to do that all upstream and then put together a video at the end of the process all about making this. But for now, this is what we got. And I'm glad I was able to get it to this point because at the start of the process, I was starting to get a little concerned that maybe I'm, I don't have enough experience to, to make it happen. But like a lot of the times I work on a project, I'm floundering for the first hour and that's okay. So uh, be sure to do all those things. Like, comment, subscribe, share it around. Uh, if you haven't seen the game bite, go watch the game bite episode one. It's really cool. It's only got like 7,000 views. So let's put that into the five digits if we can. Uh, share that with people. People need to see it. I, I imagine once we have more uh, of, of that project done, the views will grow. But that's it, guys. So I, I guess I'll talk to you all later. Thanks, Chris and Andrew, for hopping in at the end of the stream here. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we'll all see you guys in the next stream, probably two weeks from now. So until then, bye bye Later. Bye, bye Chris, bye everyone.